Hey, before we kick it off, we want to talk about our presenting sponsor of this show. You guys know that's Miller Lite. Um, listen, last recording of this show in this office, so mm-hmm. we're definitely going to be cheers into some Miller Lights. Can we can we, we pan over to our keg setup? Zoom right. in. Right next yeah, to let's me. get those kegs in the let's shot. Let's get them in the shot. If you're watching on YouTube, shout out to those kegs. We, we tapped them dry. Yep. Look at that. Um, Beautiful. Great logo. Miller Lite. Miller Lite does um, have a good logo, doesn't it? Of course it does. You know they, they they had the old one. They had the the new one, and then they brought back the old yeah. one, and then like they exploded. It's actually yeah. a really cool story, and they never got rid of it. Right. It yeah, was supposed to be they? like a uh, like a throwback. Yeah. Like, but like a temporary thing. Yes. Yeah. Which is really sweet. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, it's football season, and it's November, so you really got to lock in and uh, make sure you're stocked up because trips to the store and trips outside. You don't want to do that. Yeah. But where if you don't want to do that and you still want Miller Lite, what should you do? We're here for you because yep. we got to make it Miller time all season long. And you can get Miller Lite delivered right to your door when you visit MillerLite.com slash Redline. Or you could find it anywhere that sells beer pretty much if you want to go head out. Uh, just make sure you celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. That delivery hits a little bit different. I feel like the only thing I really get in the mail is bills. But when you call and you go to MillerLite.com, you find a delivery option and that shows up. It's like you can make it Christmas any day you want. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm yep. going to get it delivered to a friend's store. Hey, How's that? Nice. I have always Graham. thought that was a great de- idea that you should just do little niceties and send people Miller Lite. I just got to find a friend first. Yeah. It's a good idea. As soon as I get one. <laughs> it's a good idea. Um, all right. On that note, bang, bang. Uh, welcome to the mid show. Like I said, last episode of this show in this office. Uh, also, Dave, happy All Saints Day. I don't know what that means. Wow. But happy All Saints Day. Is this All Saints Day or is it Day of the Dead? Oh, All Saints Day. Yeah, I thought Day that was the dead. second. Dia de los, de los Muertos. Dia de los Muertos. Well, Wednesday, the day we're recording, is Nov 1. It's All Nov? Saints Day. Yeah, Nov. Nov. What's wrong with Nov? <laughs> Are you sure it's Nov? not Nov? It's Nov. Nov. Okay. Right, uh, Dave? Why would it be Nov? Yeah, N-O-V. See? But it's not November. Yeah, because there's an E in November. Right. And there's not an E in Nov. No one, has, no one has ever said Nov. I say it all the time. No, you don't. I've been saying it for that's years. A, that's the first time you've ever. I've, I've sat next to you for 150 days in Nov. And I've never heard you say Nov. This is our fifth November together. Dave, can you sing that song? Which song, Ed? Do uh, you remember? Yeah, but can you be... 21st of November. <laughs> yeah. No, it's it should be the Coco song. That's what you're thinking of. Da, I've da, never seen Coco. Remember me. I heard it's sad as fuck. Yeah. You, I thought you said you watch it every year on Day of the Dead with your family. I do, Are we confirmed Day of the Dead? Is it the second or the first? I thought, I I thought, thought it was Day the of the Dead was Halloween. I thought it was the same thing. It's not. It's got similar things. It's, it's November, Macabre, November 1st. Dude. Day of the Dead is November Why 1st. Why did I think it was the second? All, days, All Saints Day is November 2nd. Or no, uh, I think I guess it's both. What is All Saints Day? All Saints Day is November first as well. I feel like you, they need All Saints Day to combat all the evil spirits from Halloween. That's why they just stuck it there. Yeah. Did yes, you watch the scary it's movie? November first and second. I actually did. What did you watch? Well, it wasn't very scary. There was only one jump spot. It was it, they had that uh, haunting in Venice was available for free on Hulu. I watched that. <laughs> A little Dave? mystery. Uh, no, oh, I'm sorry. No one just got <laughs> drowned in their own blood. By chainsaw maskers and slashers. That's, that's the only thing. That's how he like jerks off to that stuff. That's what he likes. See my tweet. There was three Halloweens playing at the same time on well, different networks. And, and Chiefs, yeah. wa- networks, and Chiefs yeah. watching Piglet's Which one haunted did you house. Watch? <laughs> Chiefs watching what? Piglet's haunted house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where did your loyalty fall? Uh, I so there was Halloween. 1978, the original. Mm-hmm. There was Halloween 2007, Rob Zombie. Oh. And then there was Halloween 2018. How is the I Rob thought you Zombie meant there the all the original were playing. No, no, no. But it's pretty unique that three movies with the same name same like were all playing at the same time. I, I haven't Halloween. seen the second Halloween. two. Yeah, that's like a paradox, right? Paradigm? Mm. Paradox. Uh, Which I know it's not. I just felt like saying it is. I, don't I know think it still worked, Ed. Um, I don't think it did at all. <laughs> it it did it, but it did. It's like contra- like uh, isn't like jumbo shrimp paradox contradictory? Yeah, yeah that's that's right. Like little how, giant. How could you have a jumbo shrimp? Yeah, how could a, a giant be little? Yeah, yeah. So maybe next time, maybe point. next Halloween, we'll get we'll figure out. Anyway, what, those uh, paradox movies stink. Is. I'm glad it's over. We're in Christmas season now. Those movies don't stink. What the fuck? It's Thanksgiving. No, those movies are great. Thanksgiving yeah. doesn't have a season. Come on. I, that's, what did he say he was watching? A yesterday? haunting in Venice. No, oh. someone fucking someone someone said it perfect. I'm gonna watch Animal Planet. 
<laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I did watch a little bit of that too. There's What's eight wrong episodes. With that? Yeah. Well, it's Halloween. On Halloween, dude. Like, dude, you could watch Animal Planet like you could watch Halloween anytime you want. Ah, you can't watch Halloween anytime. This guy does. All he does is watch <laughs> horror movies, and if there isn't one available, he just goes on Reddit and reads about murders. That is that is true. Who said that? You did. You when do you that said all the that, time. You were looking you at up, like read up on murder, murder, unsolved cameras, yeah. and ring cameras. That's different shit. than like like Halloween the movie. That's a Halloween movie. Not all horror movies yeah. are Halloween movies. That's true. I but well, there's always you animals. Celebrate the genre right, the, more this, this time of year. Animal, this Animal Planet, the Netflix show that I'm watching. It's not. It's called like Our Planet Earth or Our Planet or something like that. It's all about mass extinction. You know, 99 percent of all animals that ever lived are extinct. That's pretty fucking scary. Are we next? You never all right, dude, know. You can watch That's it scary. Another 360 days of the year. That's scary. Think Halloween. about mass extinction. No, it's not. Halloween is for scary. Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve is for Christmas movies. Christmas Fourth Eve of July only? is for Independence Day. I listen no, to No, that's just summer. That's Thanksgiving is for playing trains and wait, automobiles. What'd you, wait, what'd you say? Fourth of July is for Independence Day. Like, you can only watch it on Fourth of July. Uh, no, but I'm just Jaws? saying. Jaws? Uh, sure, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Sandlot. Sandlot, sure. Great summer movie. The Patriot. Good movie, Mel Gibson. Yeah, uh, that's... I, obviously, it is a Fourth of July movie. That's... I don't... It's whatever's playing on he AMC. kicked the British out. I understand, but it, you can watch The Patriot. Fucking John don't Adams. Tell me H- I can only watch The Patriot John, John in the Adams. Summer. The HBO I'm not miniseries. saying exclusively. I'm saying those are the movies you should be watching that day. That's my point. I, you know what? Maybe you on next Fourth of July, you should remember that this is a free country and we don't have to subscribe to your rules. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm not going to be boxed into one day. How did you guys not call him out for calling Frank tanky? We did. You did. Yeah. Did like, I, that I, makes me think you didn't listen. No, you didn't I, listen. How yeah, did no I, way he does. I did. I listened. Th- to at least 20 minutes of it. Mm, yeah, I don't no, think you did. Well, he did. He was immediately it. followed by a call yes. out. Yeah. Not I immediately. No, it listened. was a little bit later in the show. We were like, why do you keep calling him tanky? I don't think you listened. But you <laughs> guys didn't call. Do you <laughs> know what a tanky he heard. is? No. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's a it's a slang word for a communist. Well, tanky you think that's tanky. what oh, You think that's what I meant by that? Of course not. Do you think not. Ed knows that? Yes, you think exactly. I know that? Exactly. You should. I've never heard that. you should have made fun of him for it. I didn't. I've never. I've Honestly, I've never heard that before. Tanky meaning. Legit, we didn't even make it. You did not listen to 20 A minutes. A member we, of the British Communist Party. Sorry, I'm not up on the British Communist Party. We didn't Dave. even make but it like through. I think it's beyond that. We didn't even make it through the number picking. So there's no way you heard that. I swear to Christ. Is it I possible? I didn't finish the episode, no. Is it possible? I did start it. That you started it and then just stopped listening while it was running. Because that's a thing that you do sometimes. I you just don't listen. just said I didn't finish the episode. Uh, but you... Okay. At I, it was an hour and thirty nine minutes, I believe, twenty nine maybe. I remember the nine being the last number. Um, I didn't know what a tanky was, Dave. I didn't know. I'm not familiar with the British Communist Party. I wasn't calling Frank a communist. That's ridiculous. Frank know, is not a communist. He's on the opposite end of the spectrum of I, Ed. I know, but you could have made fun of the guy we make fun of for being a communist. Yeah, if, but I didn't know the word, so uh, I fucked up. Next time. Next time he's trying to call him. I like calling him thank you. Yeah, you do. He likes saying the word tanky. Makes me giggle. Makes me giggle a little oh, bit, too. Oh, tanky. That's fucked yeah. up, bad. Why? They're giving him the a way pet you, name. You said that, like, yeah. all sexual there. Yeah, yeah you said it. Like, yeah. I want to fuck him. Yeah. Tanky. Tanky. You You're still do doing it sexually. Yeah, dude, <laughs> yeah, that's how Ed said it on no, the show. <laughs> no, I did no, not. He didn't. Thank you. You no, were flirting didn't. with Frank, No, because at no point did I feel uncomfortable when Ed said it. You're making it uncomfortable and weird. Well, you guys should really listen to the listeners and how it makes them feel because it made me feel like Eddie was hitting on Frank. No. Well, I, you know, maybe I was under one of those mascot heads. <laughs> you were the crack. <laughs> you were the crack. Maybe I was the crack. up, buddy. I was possibly the crack. Hey. Hmm. You know, I, I appreciate you having my back, but I also got to call you a fucking idiot because you Me? you turn on Christmas music today. Oh, I just did that to troll people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what was it? What song? Uh, Darlene Love, of course. The number one Christmas song there is. Uh, but it like it is Christmas weather. Snow's on the ground. Halloween's over. If someone wanted to listen to Christmas music today, I wouldn't hate him for it. The The Christmas starts immediately after Halloween crowd has the best argument this year. Yeah. Definitely. It's the only year they've ever had an argument. Yeah, I feel that's like. not true. What about people in Canada? We're not in Canada. Leave them out of this. <laughs> they still celebrate Christmas. I understand. Okay. I thought they do Boxers Day. <laughs> no, that's the Brits. Sorry. It's Boxing Day. Box, boxing Day. And they day. both do it. 
Oh, they do? Yeah. Wait, oh, what is it? Boxing, Boxing Day? Day? Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. Yeah. They still celebrate Christmas there, too. But it was a back in the day when you were, what's that show where you, they, the British aristocracy had like a whole staff of people that work for them. Mm-hmm. And who, and they had to work on Christmas, obviously. So when all those spoiled little brat kids would get presents that they didn't want, they would box them back up and then they would give it to the members of the staff to give to their children on Christmas or on Boxing Day the next day. Hmm. They get like the, so how does it? Okay, so like how does it evolve? I wanted, to, I wanted uh, the original know, regift. Yeah, it's a it's a whole holiday about regifting, and that's what it's evolved to. Like in current times, and I don't know. I think it's just like a tradition that they kept. Like yeah, they just okay. keep doing it. But, so it's just like a little. But I don't think they're just aka regift. Aka, I love a good regift. You regift? I'll regift for like a goofy like grab bag if I got to do one of those. You know I, what I mean? I don't. I don't think I've ever. Regifted, no, not because I. Well, I mean, you could. You, You're well, thinking you, of like the Seinfeld episode. Where he gives, where he gives him a label maker or whatever. But yeah, can't. No, I can't do that. I don't regift, and I also don't return things. No, if something's completely fucked up, you keep it for life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I, just I'll like when work. I do a closet purge or something, I'll just throw it away. But I don't. I can't be like, oh, so sh- nope. bring this back to UPS or whatever it is. Nope. Ship it out. I don't know how to do that. Absolutely, that's a not. whole step. There's a UPS like literally a block from me, and I still won't do it. Nope. Do you believe in paying it forward, Dave? Yeah, of course. Yeah. That's what we're doing this weekend. Is it not? Ed? Yeah. Yeah. True. I uh, I heard that the drive throughs actually don't like that. You know, that whole trend where it's like, I'm going to pay for the car behind me. Yeah. I'm going to pay for the car oh, behind probably me. Probably completely fucks up everything. Yeah. So, yeah, because my, my sisters were telling me they were in line at like Starbucks and she noticed that she was behind her, like just out of chance, you know? And she's like, oh, that's funny. I'm going to pay for her coffee mm-hmm. behind, because she's behind me. And Starbucks is very crowded. And they're like, like she's like, hey, I'm going to pay for the car behind me. And like the worker just looked at her and she's like, I, we're too busy to do that today. Like she's like we're <laughs> like, we, like she like hey, she was horrified. No Damn good it. deeds today. Yeah, all right. She's like no yeah. no no. It's my sister. Like just one. Like that's all I'm doing. Yeah. You know, whatever. It, it takes a lot to get a, a Starbucks employee distraught. I feel like they're all the jolliest people on earth. That's true. Typically, I, yeah. yeah. Dude, they really. Are. I still intentionally just order the biggest coffee you get, just out of spite. That's what out I of spite them. for someone doing something nice. No no no. I because they want. Like grande and all the uh, fancy uh, uh, words they have, I uh, just say, I, give me the I think they're. Have. I always just order a large coffee. They, I do too. I they never they, give me the stink eye. That was used a thing to like be fifteen a years ago. Yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. It used to be. No, I'm like I refer. I was like I refuse to learn new words. No, you don't. I already have that. words for that. Well, well, role models made it a thing. Paul Rudd. It's like, why is it called Venti if it's thirty ounces? You remember that? No, I don't know if I've, I've seen that, that movie, that made but only pop once. Culture, it's it actually was, very funny. He has like a blow up in the Starbucks lobby because they're telling him to call it by the right name, not a large eventy or whatever. No, yeah, they're actually not bad about you calling it what it is. Yeah, Ed, you're a cinephile. Do you like Paul Rudd? Yeah, I, I, mean, I have I'm, a take that he could be like in like <laughs> awesome, awesome drama actor. I'm not like. Uh, one of those people that like Paul Rudd is a national treasure, like gift to the earth. But I like him. I sexiest good. man alive. He is pretty fucking good looking. He was. I think I'm pretty sure that he was named sexiest man alive. Who who does that again? Time people. I think he was or people. Too, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. He was. You're right. Yeah. I mean, he's been in a lot of good shit. Like, but he's but never he's had like a. Se- yeah. There are, he's kind of pigeonholed. Why do you into, think that he's, he's, a, he's do a Marvel else? hero? So he is? Yeah. He's yeah, Ant Man. Ant Man, bro. I didn't know that. Come on, dude. You I guys are in the fucking clouds. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't see those movies. Neither do I. And I knew that. Yeah, I've never I don't seen want, I I've never. I've seen three Marvel movies in my life. Okay. I've seen the first Avengers, the second Avengers, and I've seen me, one of the Spider-Mans because I want to see it in D-Box. That's it. Let me let me blow your mind even three. further. I don't know what the fucking Ant-Man is. I've never heard of that before. But like, Man, you I'm are legit Man. in the clouds if he didn't know he was Ant-Man. I don't know. I've never heard the word Ant-Man before. It's two words, That dude. still makes you in the clouds because yeah, you haven't heard like, about it. That that just should, that's a blind spot for me. You got blind spots. We all got blind spots. I don't. I hear Marvel or DC what, or what you know, superhero my blind shit. Blind spot is not knowing the flag of Uganda. Like that's oh, okay. you might not know the True. flag of Mexico. Okay. But what do you what do you what do you say about this? If you're like in this profession, I think you you have to go see Avengers Endgame. You know, at that time, it's all anyone's talking we got, about. We got guys, but like for we're that. pop culture. 
We got guys for yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I didn't do that. So I the last two you should see. That's I, I haven't seen like you could see them on their own. That's the irony is like people listen to me, they'll be like, "You're a fucking idiot." You watched the first two, but not the last two. Oh um, yeah, the last two are awesome. Yeah, I don't know. I've never even seen Iron Man. So I've there's, never seen Iron there's Man a, either. I I just watched Iron Man. I've seen Iron Man like all parts of it on TV, but never specifically in order. So like two weeks ago, I'm like, I'm gonna see what all the hubbub is about about Marvel. And there's a legit order you gotta not have to watch them in, but it's recommended you watch them in. Starting with Iron Man, that movie was fucking awesome, and I knew it was good. Just have seen parts of it. I thought you were gonna say it was awful. It was <laughs> stunk, awesome, and it. So, but you don't go from Iron Man one to Iron Man two. You go from Iron Man one to uh, the Incredible Hulk with. Um, Wait, actually, yeah. See, I, this is, because then it goes into no. the Avengers. Yeah, but you could also just watch it. Yeah, I just way. watched could, the last two Avengers. You could. That's all. But there's like an actual recommended because it references the incredible first Incredible Hulk with um, what the fuck's his name from Rounders? Mark Ruffalo? No, Matt Damon. Not Matt Damon. The other guy, Eric. Wait, Banner from Rounders. Uh, Rounders. Uh, from Fight Club guy. Edward Norton. Edward, Edward Norton. Oh, yes, Edward yes, Norton. Yes, yes. Uh, he will reference. I've got it pulled up. This yeah. is the order. Wait, that's not the one I saw. Not. I saw it on Reddit. I feel like those are. That's more of a ranking. Maybe we should do this. Okay. Well, you, you what, commit suit? to like 70 hours of it's, movies? Chiefs got Planet Earth Like to watch. maybe more <laughs> than that. It might be. It might than, be, yeah. yeah. I got to see what the anteaters are doing. And I've seen um, <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Fucking great. Love that movie. Yeah, I heard I just, those are unbelievable. I, I never just. I just have never, I've never cared. I've never, like, even as a kid, I wasn't like a Batman. <laughs> guy. It, you know, it's just like. No, but Batman's different. Don't put Batman in the same That's category. not even the same universe. Yeah, I'm yeah, talking like, comic. Don't, I'm talking. Shut right, just up. Don't you dare. That, You're trying to be like, you care about DC versus Marvel. That, no, I, I care about Batman. Batman's are fucking legit. Dark Knights. I, I like the, that series of three in the middle trilogy. Did you see the Robert Pattinson one? Nah, I don't like Robert Pattinson. No, so this is wrong, Lance. Dude, watch for the Riddler. Watch for the fucking bad guys then. You want me to watch Batman for somebody besides Batman? Fuck yeah. Yes, Dude, like, Keith film. Ledger's Joker, you dingus? I watched that. True. That yeah, was yeah, that's yeah. Without the bat, I don't, I don't the have any problem with... with uh, say his name again. Heath Ledger? No, Heath Ledger and then the other guy Christian who played... Well, Craig plays Dude, the Joker. you're playing defense against Wimbayama right now. You're getting exposed. You're getting slender, man. Like, this is bad. Why? How am I getting exposed? I don't even know what the you argument is. You just said you didn't watch Batman for the villains when, like Danny said, no, but like you need... Joker is like the best. Yeah, no, he's great. He's great. But I hate Robert Pattinson. Am I not allowed to hate people? There's a, I have. You are, but also if you hate a guy. Robert Pattinson He's the main character is named after him. But he's also under a mask. Like, it's not a Robert Pattinson movie. It's a Batman yeah, he's movie. He's not Christian Bale. All right, sure. He's I don't want to see it. Hey, Ed, Chief, hey, Chief, I don't want to see it. Chief's too old. He's too old to argue with at this point. He, dude, he's yeah, stuck he in his does. ways. That's not, you really stuck are in the his old ways. Yes. True. He's the old Muppets from the fucking. No, I'm he's not. He's Clint Eastwood no, in Gran Torino. <laughs> oh, I would actually. I would be. I would love that. He was. That's a, talk about a great movie character. Fuck Robert. Here, how about this? How I don't like Robert really Pattinson. And I don't like Andrew Garfield. That's and fucking Shia LaBeouf. How about this? I don't like. I don't like those three guys. That's it. Shia, he says. How about this? Timothy like, Chalamet. We're gonna. I don't opinion. like Timothy Chalamet. Either. He's a new Wonka. That's yeah, why he said it. Yes. It looks like dog shit. I bet you it is because Timothy uh, Chalamet is in it. Hey, let's you take it easy on Timmy. What do he do? Yeah, what the fuck I don't do like his. Um, uh, there are certain He's, people I just don't like their faces, and those are my four guys. I'm like, fuck those guys. I don't like their. faces. He does not speak for the whole podcast. I want to say that. Agreed. Thought. No, I think no, after no, 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 five no. years That's of Barada, Natasha, and all these, but things, you have no reason. Pretty for hate clear. Here. Yeah, I didn't. I just I said I don't like their faces. That's fine. Yeah, I, that's it. Hold on. totally fine. Thank everybody you. has people like that. I want to punch a lot of people in the face, and I have no reason to. Let's get back to Paul Rudd's IMDb, okay? okay. Shall we? Yeah, mm. Clueless. Great. Okay. Yeah, that's his first one on the IMDb. First one. Yeah. Wow. What a way to he break probably out. Came from like he was in Halloween Six. How was it, Michael Myers? Uh, I watched it as a kid. I haven't seen. I got. I got. I'll do for you. A don't re-watch. actually have to rewatch Halloween Six. You don't. Why not? Because when you've seen one, you've seen them all. You're an idiot. Shut up. Um, I don't know how big of his roles are. Romeo and Juliet, Cider House Rules, Wet Hot American Summer. Cider House Rules is uh, kind of is a drama. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. American, uh, our anchor man. Yeah. Of course, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, the 40 Year Old Virgin. Yep. Great. Which fucking mm-hmm. was a big movie for him. Uh, Night at the Museum. 
Love Night at the Museum. I've never seen that. That's Dave, what, uh, you would love it. I'm of sure course you do. What's wrong with Night at the Museum? <laughs> nothing. It's a, <laughs> it's a monster. That is monster absolutely yeah. nothing to laugh about, even if it's a child movie. Of course you like a wildly <laughs> popular movie. You learn a lot of historical facts yeah. from this movie. Well, you, well, you get no, to enjoy actually, the comedy. No, actually, you only get the jokes if you already know the historical facts. That's why. You're, 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 like, you're like, oh, social That's studies like really Stiller came in handy. And and ben Stiller's in it. Robin Williams is in Robin it. Robin Williams, yep. Yeah. It's a great movie. I don't. I, I don't know that uh, I've ever seen it, and fucking but I know I'd love it. Watch it with some three sheet. It'll be I great. I will. <laughs> that movie rules. It is a good movie. Their depiction of Theodore it. Roosevelt. Dude, that was yeah, funny. it was funny. It was awesome. When he rode yeah. through an exhibit, did you catch that he was wearing the outfit from 1774? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know I, what he's talking about. I but mean, it's you fun. guys are you guys are basically just making fun of me for knowing stuff. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh fucking chief! Right, what a loser! He knows stuff. Ah, uh, nerd. Except for uh, I don't watch ring, I watch this instead of ring cams. That's well, fucking how you knowing what to for, do. How yeah. you gonna check for intruders, bro? Exactly. I don't have a ring cam. Knocked up. Great. Great. Walk hard, Dewey Cox story. Never saw it, but that's Dave's favorite. Yeah, give it your fucking give it to do. Uncredited cameo. What? Says what? he's John Lennon. I don't Lennon. remember him in that. Un- oh, maybe he doesn't have a big role. John Lennon. Okay. John oh, Lennon. John Lennon's got a role in that. That's fucking Paul Rudd. Yeah, I guess. I can it, see that. You could make a good it. John Lennon. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Good. Role models. Great. I love you, man, which I think is criminal. Very good movie. movie. Yep. That's so fucking funny when is he it? makes the girl so like Frappuccino <laughs> yeah. with the uh, chocolate stick. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I, I've it shows only, up. Yeah. Like the band. What's it called? It's like you a little, know the name of it. You fucking. I don't eat turd. those. You really? It's like a pepper. I know the. I know what you're talking about. Come it's on, the little wafer fighters. stick. I don't. You what? know. It's a, it's a hold on, hold on. <laughs> the cinnamon straw thing. Yeah. Or I love you, man. I may be confusing it with another movie. Is that the movie where he's like engaged in, but he doesn't have any friends? Yeah, mm-hmm. he has yes. no friends. And yeah, he, like he's it's clingy. like girls' night, and he brings out. Yeah, like a, I, I've a seen. I, I may have seen the the whole bamboo thing. Yeah. chocolate sticks that Chief has. Yeah. <laughs> <At> Chief boofs. <laughs> yeah. <The> Chateau. <laughs> yeah, those reaching normal. Can we talk about forgetting Sarah Marshall? That is. Yeah, Unbelievable in yeah. his role, he's a surfer guy. Yeah, yeah. It's How old one. are you? But I had in, to put a I, I, my on take it. is based off 44? of Knocked Year One. Up. I never saw. I that. didn't see that. Dinner for Schmucks. Never saw it. Our idiot brother didn't see that. This is forty. Didn't see that. This is forty. Is good, dude. Yeah, I, this I'm, is forty. Is great. I'm embarrassed. We're seeing the next this is the end, but I've never mm-hmm. seen. I've never seen this at the end. That yeah, I never saw that either. So. It was absolutely hysterical, yeah. and that's a type of movie like I typically hate and shit on, and get shit for shitting on it. Mm-hmm. This is the end. Was laugh out loud funny, start to finish. Ant Man, sausage see, party. I say he could be a sausage good like serious, funny. but like I don't see him as a superhero at all. Sausage party is the last one on there. Ghostbusters Afterlife. I saw he was in that. Dude, he's made like three Ant Mans. You know that how like, like a drama, oh, Dave? Oh, if I just missed the catcher all. was a spy. Six two. I didn't know Ant Man existed. You know how back in the day, like comedians would always just work towards like getting that sitcom, like they yeah. say. I think every actor now is just working towards getting that Marvel role. Yeah, because it's a do you think, billion dollar check. Do you think quality. how many? But are they still making more? Do you? Yeah. Oh yeah. They're well, they're they're, they're going. To, how do you uh, make things after Endgame? They're Sounds going like to, the last one. They're cutting back though. They they've announced the studios. I, I mean, I, I listen. Everyone shit. All the Marvel nerds hate Martin Scorsese. Yeah, they're getting into it. <laughs> I, I, I agree with them. Explain the argument again. And I, I like listen. There's there's a place for everyone. It's not like Mar- Marvel people shouldn't be that overprotected of it because it, it's not their fault that they love it so much and the studios have just grossly is, is like, Scorsese exploited. directing Marvel now? Yes, exploited yeah. the genre. What is Scorsese no. directing Marvel? No, no, so no, it's basically no, no. Scorsese Stop said. It. Then Marvel's not cinema. Like it's kind of ruining like something along those lines where it's like oh, yeah, kind of right. ruining cinema because it's not letting like m- like mid budget yes. movies get We've made. We've talked about this forever. Yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's it's true. Like these these studios are kicking back. They're like, wait a minute, why don't we just make a Marvel movie for three hundred million and then we'll make a billion? Yeah. Like why would we ever worry about all the other shit? The fifty million dollar yes. project like See, might be things, things that are actual like yeah. original. Art. The yes. movies, yeah. the movies yes. got their own algorithm now. Just so, like everything yeah. else. Yes. It's true. So my my Fucking friends, the, the Clems and the Robbies, are like not happy with Martin. Okay. I, I mean, I feel like the wor- the world should be big enough for both, but but and it they, clearly is. They both do very well. But I would say that there's less movies 
there's less like real original style movies now than there used to be. We've talked about that. They don't make comp like the mid to low budget comedies anymore. Like Chris Farley movies would never get made now. No, mm-hmm. never. Yeah, what pe- were they saying? Like you can't take a chance anymore. Yeah, like you can't take a creative well, it's chance. Like we made a movie for thirty million and it made a hundred, so that was a failure. Right. Like, that just like how is making a profit of seventy million a failure? Like that's fucking crazy to me. And so I'm with See, I'm with Scorsese. I've said that before. This fucking I don't know. We could keep it on movies, but this whole got to see how much you grow over a year over year and yeah. like the your your stock it's so fucking Well, that's annoying. why I love that Dave bought the company back because he's like, "Hey, like, you know, we're not and he said all this stuff publicly, but it's like we'll just it doesn't have to always be at like, oh, we're making money year over year. It's like if we're breaking even and, you know, like it doesn't matter. Like I've made all my money, like we're good. And um like that, like that should be a thing. Like as long as you're profitable, it doesn't matter that like your oh projections. Yeah, your... like oh we didn't hit our projections. Well sometimes there's like reasons for that that are bad, but sometimes it's just like, oh, the their stock tanks because they made forty five million instead of fifty. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's bullshit. You still made you made a forty five million dollar exactly. profit. That shit drives yes. me fucking nuts. And that's like that's a big issue. Is mm. these these shareholders are just mm, never mind. BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, ruining the fucking world. Dave, I don't disagree. <laughs> it's true. Everybody remember that those three, all the ESG, all those three firms, they just fucking ruin everything. Yeah, sorry, it's got buying the, up all the fucking property. Yes. in the United yes. States, yeah, exactly, limiting the Dave. supply, artificially heightening the price. Ed, exactly, Dave cook dave keep going i can't okay. i'll get it a little too <laughs> i'll get too frustrated take it out on ed <laughs> do it um, no, don't ed, do ed's it. a big like you'll own nothing i, and like I don't know guy. if we can pull this up on um on youtube right now but my my entire theory of the, the onion paul video? rudd being what i think could be an just fantastic actor are two scenes one one he does the uh, Robert De Niro impersonation and knocked up like ten seconds of it at the dinner table. Fantastic! He looks more like and sounds more like De Niro than De Niro does. These shoes and the scene where they walk into him playing fantasy football. He sincerely looks like a dude terrified of his wife in that moment. Like the look on his face, he's like, "Holy shit! I just got caught!" And he's like, "Like it's all based on that." What movie is that from? Sorry, knocked up. Knocked oh, up. Knocked up. Yeah. Paul Rudd, yeah. Just mm-hmm. sitting there in an Orioles hat. Yes, and he's like, <laughs> he's like trembling. He's like, I'm yeah. like, that guy's actually, like, he's actually scared of his wife right now. Can I act his balls off? I was in a room with Robert this year, you know? You, oh. you were. Yeah. You were. That's right. Yeah. I had to pass out. That was uh, for... <laughs> I forgot why. What's, Which yeah. movie? That was uh, like a screening, about right? About my father, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Me and Robert were in the same room. Not a big deal. Yeah, that's kind of he's crazy. old as fuck yeah. now. Even Still though I was kids. in like the last three rows of the auditorium. Yeah, you bo- are you boss Eddie? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. <laughs> just seeing Robert De Niro in person. Nice to meet you, boss Eddie. He. He just still does everything. Like he did that movie. He did Killers. He's done like I saw Monday Killers. What'd you think? Um. Have you seen it or not? Yeah, you have. So I was more excited about Killers this year than I was about Oppenheimer. Same. Like that was my <laughs> movie. I had circled. Mm-hmm. I thought it was fine. You gonna give us a score? He doesn't like doing that. <laughs> we going back to John's Pizza right now? <laughs> Don't bring Is that, that up. That's from? Don't bring that up, honestly. <laughs> yeah, you don't remember that? I remember it, but I forget why you want to do it. I forget too. I remember it was a saga, though. Uh, in the B range, low Did you B's. Like that better or Oppenheimer better? Probably Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you? Barbie. I I have them about in the same range. I think they're both I think they're both good, not like earth shattering. Yeah. And for some reason that's okay to say about killers and it's not okay to say about Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Um but I just you know, the I wish they made it <clears throat> the, my my problem with killers is it felt like there were no like plot twists. Like you knew like you were never surprised, like and then they made it like uh like the investigation, the true crime part of it, like I thought came too late. But like I, I was never like, holy shit. And I don't know everything about that story. I couldn't tell like, you anything about that movie. Is that based on a true story? Yeah. It is? Okay. Yeah. You didn't see it? I have not seen it, no. Oh. Did you see it alone? No, with a couple of friends. What do you think about seeing it alone? And I, man, 
I, I really, love to be with movies alone. I, I go all the time. Really? I haven't done it in a long time, but when I used to, in a previous life, my old job, I think I've talked about this before, like, instead of having, like, a business dinner with people in my company that I hated, I'd be like, oh, I'm meeting a client, and then I would just go to the movies by myself. I don't know. It's, it sounds great, but it's like you're getting spotted or something by yourself. No, if I'm in great. Mooresville, North Carolina. Yeah, well, you're not getting spotted then. Yeah. Who fucking... I would do it here. I don't care. I, yeah, I go all the time I, alone. I, that's a that's a that's like a serial killer thing though. This no, is, it's not. People talk about I don't about think it is nice. either. I know, but like if I were to see someone alone, I'd be like, Ooh. I think it's more normalized now. At a at a movie, definitely. Yeah, I think at one people point, talk about how awesome it is. I've never done it. I think at one point it was. I think now within the last ten years, it's been normalized. You're not getting. Are you just saying things? Because I don't think it's been normalized. I think no, it definitely yeah. has. Been. I think it has. Alone? It yeah, has solely because of Movie Pass and these subscriptions. Hmm. Like because if I if I have any movie I want to see at the fingertips my fingertips because I pay ten bucks a month yeah like why would I wait to go with people like I'm just gonna go see everything yeah that's why I see so many movies I got the subscription yeah you know I would like it to be normalized more yeah well I'm get the subscription you'll never feel bad because you're like oh you're here alone it's like yeah I gotta get my money's worth <laughs> see two movies a month to get your money's worth I also saw, the fucking yeah. AMC in Northbrook is a fucking pile of shit for go me. off go off what's wrong with I it I want to go off more but. That sucks. Okay. Just you've been put on notice. Don't make them go. It doesn't off. do that. Often. Fix your what snacks. They do to you? What they it's do? Just, uh, you know, it's, uh, do they have a butter machine? I'll leave with that. He won't give a score. He won't yeah. give details. Uh, it's a bad, it's it's a bad it's experience. Johnny okay. Tightlips over here. Yeah. It's a bad experience. They need to update that theater and completely rehab it, rehaul it. Why do you it's go just, to that one? Uh, it was the only one at a decent because flowers you need to like time out. Yeah, I didn't want to go too late, so yeah. it had like a five twenty showing, so I want to get out of there super late. And I had the recliners. You kind of need the recliners at that moment, mm -hmm. you know. Well, you know, it pissed me off too. They're Bavaria. They're, they're uh, you ever get the pretzel bites at AMC? Nope. They're fantastic. Okay. They're fantastic. This place, they fucking chop up a Bavarian. That's not right. Oh, instead of little nugs? Yeah, that's not right. Is that right, Dave? That's not right, Ed. That's not right. It's not right. What if you like double fried? And it? there's more that happened, but I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'll leave it at the pretzels. Give the people what they want. Oh, that just that fucking. You got it. You sometimes look at sometimes. There's maybe there's a lot of people who are just out there going and not voicing their concern. Maybe that AMC you have a platform needs some right constructive criticism. They do yeah, to they improve need a lot. So let the people have it. Yeah. Go, go fucking fix that theater. And my number one is AMC Schaumburg. They're doing a great job out there. Can Streets I take a bathroom break? Where are you going? I need to, Why? The coffee's hitting. No. He's got a potty. I got a potty. You can't do that. What if you missed You just did that like a week ago. That was Me? a pee. This is different. Oh. You got a, you got a irritable quick. bowel. It's hey, one, go shit. destroy that toilet one last time, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> How many times have you guys shit in this office? I'd say less than seven. I would say less than five. Yeah. Dude, probably like 30, 40 times. Really? Probably yeah. 10. I'd, I'd say less than five. And it was always like an emergency. My <laughs> body knows me so fucking well. I need my home turf. Yeah. Home turf is nice. Yeah, it's good. Uh, one more. Th I'm going to get a new toilet. I still hate my own toilet at home. I don't like mine either. I, what if you just replace the bowl or the, uh, the seat? It's just, it sits too low. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What are you, like a geriatric? You need a high one? Why does that make me a geriatric? I'm just tall, you short fuck. <laughs> Dude, sometimes the old people don't like small toilet, like oh, low I toilets. I don't like when I'm sitting down on the toilet like this. I just want to sit normal. I feel like I'm like my knees are above How my, my ass. How low is your toilet, dude? It's a fucking, that... it's like a child's toilet, no. basically. You have two bedrooms or bathrooms, don't you? No, just one. You have one? Yeah. Hmm. No way. Yeah. Talk about poor people's shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have two. And you have a Juliet balcony. That's true. Yeah. Yes. And you have AC. That is true. You don't wow. have AC. I. I mean, I have the machines. It's an old building. Oh, you have window units. We've talked about this before. Yeah. yeah. Oof. That's <laughs> that's like number one on my checklist is. Yeah. Can I tell you machine. something? It was one of those things where when I was touring it, I I didn't even think about it, and then once I was in and like signed, I was like, oh fuck. Like I was signing and they're like the uh, the AC window units are included. So you don't have to buy them. I'm like, wait a second. What? Oh. And it was like, dude, that's so hard. That's like one of the home buying process. Ooh. Yeah. That's like you I didn't think house? to just like run out of there and like start over and find a new place. You, you remember that process? I, that's yeah, yeah. I actually don't. I don't mind them. 
They're, they've it's been fun. No, I've had I had them in yeah. one apartment. It's the first time I've ever had it. Though. Yeah, I had yeah. it in my l- shitty Lincoln Park. I apartment had it in and, college too, but that was also like a yeah. fucking thirty square foot apartment. Yeah. Dude, I had a situation. Well, well, my thing that I didn't realize until I moved in was the house was. I think it was built in late sixties, early seventies, mm-hmm. and the electric is like the old ones, where if you if you a uh, if you if you close a light or if you turn off a light, it'll turn off everything on that wall. Oh. So like if my TV was on that wall and someone was like walking out, they turn, turn oh. the light off, it would like knock off the TV. You know, and then so you have to the, reset the cable yes. box, wait for that to come back to life. Yes. Yeah. So the, the light switches, like there was no like fixtures. So the light switches, you have to have it on for the power to work. Yikes. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. So I had to replace all that. Hmm. But that's like little shit I didn't even think to look at. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, I, I had a when I was watching Planet Earth with my Breachy last night. I built a fire too. It was nice. We got the wood burning fireplace. I figured oh, out how nice. to start my fireplace. It's nice. I couldn't figure it out for a year and a half. Finally figured it out like within the last month. Did you get your uh, shit clean? Your fl- the flume? Yeah, I, I have electric. Year. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. No, I do that every year because I or gas rather worried about a chimney fire. Someone said that who was a chimney sweep? Someone on the yak like uh, KB. 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 Did you guys talk about it? I have not. I haven't seen him since. Um, Picked his brain. Possible career change. Yeah. I'm still upset with you. You didn't have me on the episode with the chimney sweep. Yeah, I, I tried. I, I know. I was I, out of town for yeah, something. I, I asked you for sure. I know I asked you. Um, That would have been fun. Hey, uh, Factor Meals, guys. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, uh, convenient meals to keep you energized or jam-packed days. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. That's the best. Everyone loves that. Mm-hmm. Like if, you, if you're not a good cook, if you don't know what you're doing. I am a, a good fa- cook, and I still love it. Because you don't want to do it all the time. No. I agree. Yeah. And there are times, I've said this the last time we were talking about Factor 2, where you come home late at night and you're like scrolling, like, should I get delivery? And it's like, no, you know what? No, I'm just going to pop in a Factor. It's going to be healthier. It's going to be better. It's going to be quicker. And you're good to go. They got a ton of different uh, styles. Anything that you would want, Factor has it. Yeah. So Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. So all you have to do is heat and enjoy. If you need an extra boost to support your wellness goals and feel the best during the holidays, try Protein Plus meals with 30 grams of protein or more per serving. This November, get Factor and enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door, ready in just two minutes. No prep, no mess. Head to factormeals.com slash Chicago50 and use code Chicago50 to get 50% off. That's code Chicago50 at factormeals.com slash Chicago50 to get 50% off. Danny, how was your uh, how was your dump, dude? Pooper Dan. It was great. It's definitely not going to be the one of the last ones here. You guys saying under seven times since we've been here is crazy. You think so? I mean, I'm, I'm probably twice a day here. Well, Once you have least. IBS. But not even, like... <laughs> After a coffee or not, like first thing in the morning, I'm I'm getting well, here, but having a coffee, and I'm taking the shit yeah, sometime well, I, before I five p.m. Have What's my that? first coffee like before seven a.m. So, but you guys, you guys go out of your way to not like you're uncomfortable. You don't shitting sh- in public places. So that's why so I like not. to poop at home. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, now you can't always do it. Yeah, but you're saying like, how long does it take your first poop of the day? To yeah, do? that's my question too. Because mine's like first thing in the morning. Yeah, like I, I the like afternoon. pooping's one of the first things well, I do. I'm having my first coffee on the way here, so by the time I get to the office. But do you poop at home in the morning? No. Uh, let's see, that's see. That's, that's that's because that's, I need a coffee to get things going. That's lunacy. Should I take I this call from people's gas cave? <laughs> Put them on speaker. I'll give them a fucking piece of my mind. Why? Why? What are you doing with people's gas? You're in a f- blood feud. No. I I got a notice about um, that I wasn't paying the bill for a place that I never lived. Oh, that's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're like, you owe, so I think it was like 1400 bucks. I'm like, no, I had never fucking lived there. Uh, I feel like this could be a bigger problem than that. Did Why? someone steal your identity? Okay. No. You're sure? Yeah. It, it was, I know what exactly what happened. It was the Thomas Street apartment. I moved out. I moved out the same time as somebody else. This is this is not the first time we've had this issue, but they were charging me for a unit upstairs because the people who moved in the day that I moved out, because both units moved out, they were like, they mixed up the addresses. 
So the people upstairs of the Thomas Street, upstairs of where I was living, didn't get charged for like a year and a half or something for gas. And then they're like, oh, that was on you. I'm like, I didn't live in that unit. I didn't live there. So I'm not paying that. I didn't fucking live there. And then they're like, oh, that's our mistake in our system. And then time goes by. I get a notification being like. They didn't fix it. Yeah. That's a pain in the ball sack. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Uh, You know what else is a uh, pain in the ass? What's that? Chicago Bears. Yeah. (laughs) See, they fired another coach. Fired the running back coach. Yeah. HR issues. This, this is the thing. They should just fire Eberflus now for this. This is the only like way that the Bears would ever make an in-season change. But it's like you can't like have – because they did say it was he was warned. So I'm guessing it was some kind of harassment of some kind in the, in the workplace. And they warned him, and then he never stopped his behavior, talking about David Walker, the running backs coach. Mm-hmm. And then it got to the point where they're like, all right, we have to fire you in week fucking eight in year two because you can't get whatever issue we've warned you about under control. And that's coming on the heels of Alan Williams. I've never heard of a guy that has had to fire two assistant coaches on his staff midseason, both for HR issues completely unrelated to each other. They just So he's just like, did you not do like any sort of background check, character check, or do you just not even care? Like, do those, like, ah, like, because he's coached with these people in other places. And he, so I'm guessing this is not something that they started doing the first time in Chicago. Even if they didn't, those coaching circles are tight knit. Yeah, you would like, know. Word gets around, you know, you would know. <clears throat> yeah. So it, it's, it's pathetic. It's, it's one thing after another where it's just like they, they can't get right. They can't get right. Uh, the Alan Williams thing. Like, are we, we're never going to find out. Huh? I don't know that we are. How? How? I don't know. I'd where, lo- where is hey, like I'm a gonna, real journalist? Where's I'm gonna text that fucker Jeff Nadu? Why? Because he oh, was he like was all, all puffing over his it. chest, yeah. like, man, this shit ain't good. I was like, what are you talking about? No one knows anything. He, he was goes, just reading tweets. Because I got sources. He's like, I. He's like, they his house got raided, and like what? That has never been anywhere confirmed. Even right? Yeah, exactly. But just so you know, an hour ago it, at. Uh, the press conference, Matt Aberflew says the culture is great here. <laughs> yeah, clearly. I don't think he could identify a good culture. The team stinks. Your coaches are getting fired left and right, or getting dismissed, and getting dismissed in a way that's out of your control. Yeah, you know, like you're you're a problem. They should they really should fire everybody. Yeah, I mean, I. It's a dumpster fire. We could move on to other topics because there's one thing I'd like to address, though. Like people keep it's Ryan and I specifically. They keep shitting on us for like saying Badgett was like, okay last week. I don't don't understand. I don't understand that. I don't understand why it's like that has to be. People are very I think there's there's a faction of people who are still so like Justin Fields is the guy to him. Yeah. Yeah. And people people would rather and like I I don't I've moved to a direction where I don't think Justin Fields is the guy. I would love to be wrong about that. I will raise my hand gladly to say I was wrong about Justin Fields. I think there are certain people who can't admit like they don't ever want to admit mm-hmm. that they might have been I'd wrong. Agree. And I think that's that that faction. And if you if you think that like hey like our best course of action still is to see what we have with Fields, I'll. I can accept that answer, but you can't sit there and be like, Fields has been an impressive quarterback this year. Mm-mm. So, and th- there are things that Bajan does well that we haven't really seen consistently from Fields. And Bajan was far from perfect against San Diego. He had, he had, a, he had a kind of a, I would say, a not as good day against the Chargers, as, even though like the yardage and stuff like that was better. He was, he was more impressive against the Raiders than he was against mm-hmm. the Chargers. But second ever start, first start on the road against a team that has some fucking dudes on defense, national TV, thought he did fine. And What's wrong with saying that? Yeah, and we're catching heat for that. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, yeah. I mean, was like, he wasn't dudes, fine, he's shit. Defense. He's got a noodle arm. It's what? like... Charge our bad defense, though. Yeah, but if you have a, if you have plays where... Are, are they a bad statistical defense? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, they got Bolsa, they got Mack, they got Derwin James, they got some guys on that defense, 
And uh, and there, you know, there are plays where he certainly he left. You know, he had the the wrong read on plays too, and he had a few couple interceptions and and a couple that probably should have been intercepted. But I don't like he was not the biggest problem. And and from a, like I said, going from D two Shepherd to the NFL, starting on the road, and you could you could say whatever. You know, the Chargers don't have a good defense. It's Yards the, per game, they're the, they're the second worst. It's the best defense he's ever played. Giving up 390 a game. Yeah. Uh, the, only the Broncos are worse than them. Okay. Uh, points per game, they are, looks like they're 20 something, giving up 24 a game. But I also think people are like saying that I'm saying Bajan is the guy. I'm, I've never said that. I've you were said, hyped up after the Raiders game, but I said I think he could yeah, be yeah, a backup yeah, like, in the league for ten years. That's what I said. Yeah, but I, I still like. I could see people having a problem with you making a bold proclamation like that after one game. That's fair. I don't think. I, 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 I think that's fair for you to say he's a ten-year backup. But he's I think he game. could be. I think that's, he has a good enough arm. He sees the game well enough. He's athletic enough, and he's got a moxie to him. He's got some moxie to him, and. And yeah, I think, I think that you could make yeah, uh, maybe. Uh, but it's like I feel more comfortable saying that he can be a backup in the league for ten years than I do saying Justin Fields is going to be a franchise that's guy. My point as well. Yeah, and and then I people were also mad that I said that he earned the right to start against San Diego, which I think he did. I don't think, and especially given Fields is does injury. your tune change a little bit now that the Raiders just fired. McDaniel's and they fired their GM and they're yeah, the Raiders are a fucking they're disaster. Like the number, you know, if you talk top three dumpster fires, it's I mean, <laughs> maybe you take Denver out right now because they yeah. just beat the Chiefs. Mm-hmm. But like it's us, them. That's it. Giants are pretty bad. Giants, yeah. are, Giants are under duress. But the Giants are on their third quarterback too. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, but people are starting to really fucking totally. But they there. they also made the playoffs last year. Yeah, you I mean, know. So, um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, but it's like I don't think I said anything that crazy about Bajan. I think I said that he's, I've been impressed with him, given the circumstances, and uh, that you he, drank the Kool Aid pretty hard after the Raiders game. What does that mean? I, I I'm not walking that, back anything I said after the Raiders game. They did not make the playoffs last year. Did was, they not? Did they, they've made the playoffs one time with Daniel Jones? They've made the playoffs with Daniel Jones. Maybe the year before. Dable I feel like they Kef played Kef the Vikings the and lost. What? Dable and Kafka. Yeah. Um, my my overarching. Wait a second, though. I want him to explain what, what drink, I drank the Kool-Aid hard means. Because I don't think I did. You Drinking said he might Kool- be the guy. I mean, but like that's tongue in cheek. Th- there was a lot of tongue in cheek yeah. about his Raiders start. Because but of I thought that he gets the ball out on time. From. Like, yeah, and, and he, yeah, it wasn't as you. There was a lot of tongue in cheek for sure. There was a lot. People were, but I think some people are not saying we're saying Bajan is you know Brady and Purdy and all these things. No, they did make it. My apologies. You're right. Okay, thank right. you. They lost the Vikings, right? Um, why is this so fucking? Uh, yes, they beat the Vikings. Beat the Vikings. Okay, and they lost to the Eagles. My yes. apologies. Okay, um, so they won a playoff game. So it's hard to put the Giants in that category. Yeah, even though they've been they've been terrible this year, but. Yeah, like I, I, I stand by what I've said about him, that he deserved to start against the Chargers, and then they could reevaluate. He's obviously starting this week, too. I think it, it's kind of following the exact plan that I laid out. He was good against the Raiders, start him again. He was fine against the Chargers, some hiccups, some problems for sure. Start him again, bring back Fields fully healthy to light up the Panthers and see if you can get mo- back on track with him. I just have a hard time with you saying he was fine against the Chargers. Dude, but but it's, it's, a, it's grading on like a curve. 50, yeah, but, yeah. But, but there's no curve. He's good or he's not. The Shepherd story there's is over. There's always a curve but the for story rookie is, quarterbacks. Yes, there's listen, always but, a curve for rookie quarterbacks. Okay, but listen. To say he was okay, they put up seven points. Like, yeah. One was dropped that's on not okay. a perfectly thrown. And they scored on that drive, point, though. Did they? Yeah. But I agree. Look, I thought I don't think he was the biggest problem. He's no, got I mean, guys our, in his face. Our, don't get me wrong. I know our defense fucking sucked. And the we offensive line the fucking pass. sucked. When you line up Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa over Larry Borum and Cody Whitehair, you're going to have a fucking lot of pressure. And they were running plays with the sprint outs where it was like Art, where he had that one, I think it was to Komet, where he was sprinting to his left, where it's like, we have to run a sprint out to their side to let them suck back in. So all Borum has to do 
give Bosa one of those and just trap him inside as he runs out. Like they had to, like they were they were not equipped to play that defense specifically. And I thought, given the circumstances of his second start, don't say there's not a curve. There is always we're a arguing curve. Arguing different things. What are we arguing? You're arguing like, oh, there's obviously a curve because he's a second year or he's a first year quarterback. Yes, like you wouldn't judge Patrick Mahomes. First sure, but, year against right. Patrick Mahomes, fifth year. All right, sure, but I'm judging it as a straight up as in a vacuum of mm-hmm. was it a successful day playing quarterback for anybody in the NFL? It would be grade stamp no. Yeah, if it's a binary yes, thing, it wasn't. That's good what enough. I'm saying. Yeah, that's what, what I'm arguing, and you're arguing on a curve. I'm ar- yeah, I'm arguing on a curve because I don't think he was the biggest problem. I think he still did some some things well for a guy in his second start, and. Look at there. There is a talent gap between the Bears and basically every team they're going to play, and I thought that they had a lot of problems against the Chargers, and I don't think he was the biggest one. You, on you, you talked about all the issues on defense, the the offensive line, especially the left side of the offensive line right now, is a huge problem, and I thought he was fine on a curve. I'm not. I'm not saying like, hey, like we fuck Caleb Williams. I'm not even saying fuck Justin Fields. I'm just saying like we're at this time right now where like I don't want to see Fields if he can't grip the football 100. percent What's so crazy about that? And okay. then bring him back against the league's worst team. I think the that's Panthers. more what people are coming about about the that post game after the Raiders when it was like, oh, if I think he deserved the right to play, but you're giving someone who's you're judging on a curve the right to play. That's the point. I thought that he ran the offense better than we've seen from Justin Fields this year. We have. I agree. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you I want to, you want to go back and look at Justin Fields' first two starts this year and compare okay, them side then if by you're side against good Tyson Bajan. Good, if you, okay, then Fields had two good starts, mm-hmm. two to one. That's one better than Bajan had. I mean, we're, we're, it's a stupid argument. Well, then it's even to even. How so? How many starts is, has Fields had? So you're saying he had double the starts? Yeah. Okay. So it's a fifty percent ratio. Sure. So it's even. All right. Fine. And Fields should be ahead. Year two in the system, more talent. Coming from a better place, thirty-five first starts, pick. right? So yes. agreed, right? I want Justin Fields to be the guy. I don't think he is. I think that I think there are things that Bajent does, and I don't even think. Uh, to be clear, I don't think either of you were like gushing about him no. after the Chargers post game at all. That's, I don't know why you're getting heated at all. I'm not. I'm personally. not that heated. It's it's no, no I heated, but I don't know why you're getting shit. I get why he's getting the shit same because he I was. Said. No, no, no. You were you, you were a little hotter after the Raiders win. But for the Chargers win, I don't think you guys said anything out of line. I don't think I said anything out of line for the Raiders, though. Like what you have to but like you've said these things to me and I give you a retort and then you still say I'm saying that I, I was too hot. What do you mean? I told you the whole time if Justin Fields was healthy, he should have started. That was my point. Yeah. Okay. Like, that, All right. That, that, then, that's then, my retort then, the whole time. Then fine. But I and I I guess I just I disagree. I, there's a. I didn't think he would be healthy, and that's what I said in the blog, and I said it on the podcast. That I, when you look it up, it says it's typically a six week injury. Listen, you know what the big problem is that we're even having this fucking that's, argument. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, that's the big problem. The Bears and are turning. We're arguing about the, like. <laughs> listen, Tyson Bajan, I hope each other. he has a great career, but is he going to be the guy that gets us the fucking playoffs in the Super Bowl? Probably not. Correct. Is Justin Fields? Don't look that way either. See uh, that? That's. And that's I, the fucking I problem. I so. almost. Positive. We're fucking just our pets' heads are falling off. I literally. No, I won't even say. I'm positive that Justin Fields isn't going to lead the Bears to the Super Bowl. I'm only 99.9 percent positive that Tyson Bajant won't lead the Bears to a Super Bowl. But that like one tenth of a percent is good enough for me. Where it's like (laughs) he let him fly because Fields. You're, I don't, you're I don't, 100% I don't out need on any. I don't need. If How do you he, argue with that? If he, I don't if, know. If, I got. He put me in a blender. I didn't even understand it. <laughs> I'm saying that WSD both. Stats. All right. I I think one. There's a hundred percent chance that he does not lead us to the Super Bowl. That's Fields. That's Fields. Okay. I think that Bajent ninety nine point nine percent won't lead him, but that one tenth of a percent is enough for me to say. Fuck it, let's see what we got with him. Here, here's you want to talk about pets' heads falling off and the fan base turning against each other. If somehow Bajan has a big start and does has a very good start against the Saints, and then Fields is ready to go against Carolina. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm ready then, for it, baby. Oh, it's gonna be like a civil Bedlam. war here. Bedlam, I love it. I actually, but it's, I it hope should that be like that's. You're right. There's a lot. Competition breeds success too. There's a lot of Bears fans feuding like what we just did yeah. over that thing over K 
Caleb Williams having a bad game, a couple bad games, people are like, oh, we're fucking out on him. But then people who aren't out on Fields, it's like, wait a minute, you're going to throw the guy under the bus, the college player who had two bad games versus Fields, who has shown us a plethora of bad games. Dude, the Caleb, the Caleb years, Williams know? thing is getting weird too. It is getting weird. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying different sides of the. I know, of the but island. like the, I did see a graphic where it's like Caleb Williams against teams that are in the top 25. It's ugly. Not good. Well, and it and it's special. But then it's like especially this year, he has to do everything. You know, which was kind of the knock against Mahomes. Like yeah. Mahomes at Texas Tech, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, he's going off script. He's like doing all these things. Like, can he run an NFL offense? That was like, that's why he slipped. What do you mean? He picked 11th? 10th or 11th? Something yeah. like that. And, but like tools wise, he was like a clear number one. Yeah. But now Caleb Williams is kind of getting that same criticism. Is, uh, he's not near the like escape artist that Mahomes is, right? Oh, did you I, watch that Notre I, Dame I, game I last year? I don't I think know he enough def- about No, him. he definitely is. He, he has, has that uh, same yes, like. Yes. Okay. He's not like he's not as good of a runner as Justin Fields. Well, of but, course, yeah, no, right. But yeah. that's but he's a, a very good athlete. Eyes downfield. <laughs> okay. You know, like he'll he'll get out of it, and then you think he's like, oh, he's got a clear first down, and then he throws it for thirty yards. Mm-hmm. You know, like he could run scamper for ten. He's like, nah, I'm gonna throw it for thirty five. Did any of that argument make sense to you, Lance? I mean, you're listening. I mean, it's just which argument the, the one, one that, you, that we, we just had. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think it does make sense because you kind of see Justin Fields, and it, it almost feels he looks like incompetent. You, you know, he's an awesome athlete, and then like Tyson Bajan looks super like competent, but then not a super athlete. So I would need a freaky fry to them. That's so I get it. Uh, I think like we have to move on from both of them. Like you know yes. what I mean? Like and that's my thing. I'm just like frustrated because it's like, what are we even talking about? bell curves like we he's probably not the guy either so it's hard to even sit here and really like be so get so jazzed up about him i mean maybe you guys are just higher on the bajan experience than i am and that's probably what it is if dave's 99.9 percent, he he does nfl things like he does yeah, he, he does he listen and like he's he's he stepped in and he's done yeah better than what i would have thought he would correct have done, he's done sure. fine yeah yeah and there's there is like talk about bell curves there's also learning curves and that's where the bell curve like grading on a curve comes in like you guys get it's what's that old cliche like nobody gets better they just get more consistent so if Beijing I can see a scenario that allows him to stay in the league for a long time as he gets more reps sees you know like right. but the things that he does well he's got a quick release he's got a good arm he's got a, he he sees the field pretty well seems to be pretty accurate like Listen, a couple I, of those those yep. passes that he completed to uh feel in the pocket like, like hey were, i hope i get to a point where he lights up against the saints and he plays against the panthers and i'm like hey you know what maybe yeah and on your point though like look, that, one of those not. picks that was miscommunication that's not something that that's like hey i did this you did that yeah. let's not do that again that's something that but can I, be fixed like totally this. but i also think there were some moments there where he he got lucky yeah came, oh definitely came, definitely, you know, definitely. So. but i i don't think that's uncommon for most games with most quarterbacks he i'm sure also if you, in a position where they were down 14 from the jump so you're, and they weren't running the ball particularly well mm-hmm. so like that was the thing of the raider game like the raiders were very vanilla which we talked about chase daniel with and the bears ran the ball exceptionally well they set him up to have success he didn't have that same support in the chargers game um and looked worse than he did the week before. So I think, you know, I don't I, I don't think we know what are you getting frustrated for over there at No, I just like we I'm not frustrated at all. It's just it we're just exhausting so much time on this and it's yeah, bullshit. Yeah, but it's, that's football. It's the, know, it's the, the debate in Chicago. I'm more upset. Dollar. I'm not upset with anyone. In the, it's not like I'm not upset with you guys. I'm just mm-hmm. upset in the position we're in. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst part is the that you're even talking about a D2 well, undrafted kid from I can't fucking wait West to Virginia. have the, the Drake May versus Tyson Bajan discussion. Yeah, and that's years. what I mean. Like, it's, Oh, we're moving on to oh, Drake oh, May? Oh, you're saying, like, why? Because he's not going to be good? Who? Drake May. I don't know, but I feel like if the Bears draft him, there's a good chance that he's not going to be good. Oh, Can you imagine drafting another North Carolina yeah. quarterback? It'd be funny. I can't, dude. I really can't. I think about that. Yeah. I, it has... Well, that's why. Do I, they, is Mac Brown still there? Uh, who's the coach yet? Yeah, Mac Brown's still there. Yeah. And that was he was there with Mitch. Uh, no, no, Matt, no, 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 no. Uh, it was Larry. Um, the Larry, fuck was Larry, his name? Larry Fedora. So, so, yes, Fedora. Yeah. It was li- really. Yeah. yeah. How mm-hmm. did I don't remember yeah. that? But like, it, it shouldn't have any bearing on 
Drake May, but like that juju would be so bad. But like, I it just, would be so bad. You know, and they'd it would be like palpable, and you wouldn't be able to get right. rid of it. But I remember, like, and for whatever reason, North Carolina quarterbacks seemingly get hyped up like crazy. Like Sam Howell, there was a moment when Sam Howell was like yeah. a mock draft preseason top five pick. Yeah, I remember. I'm like that guy's not like he might be able to play in the NFL. He's not like a franchise guy. He's he's, he's another pretty good. He's, he's another guy. guy. That's fine. The, I'm sure the Commanders would like to upgrade that position. Oh, he took pretty good. He's I'm okay. sure they would like to upgrade that position. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, commanders, just because the Commanders do it doesn't mean it's right. They're a very dumb franchise as well. Yeah. But uh, they have a new owner now, so maybe they, they won't be as dumb. True. Yeah. True. Well, Magic. we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Before we do, though, right. ChevyDriveChicago.com. Chicagoland, your local Chevy dealers want you to know that it's time to buy a new Chevy, and the time is now. So, Ed, yeah. you and I went to Georgia. We did. We got an Equinox rental. Yes. Mm-hmm. I got got under the hood of that thing, got the feel of it. That's a nice car. It is. It was very nice. The mm-hmm. AC temperature was nice. Yep. Uh, just, you know, it was smooth, Dave. Smooth ride. I was taking these guys through the country and whatnot, and we still made it work. Yep. I heard that. I heard it Ed, did well on all the dirt roads you took them through did. with yeah. It did. Yeah. A, a fucking wooden troll bridge that he took us across. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it was it was a nice ride. It was it a was. nice ride. Yeah. So whether uh, you're looking for a car for you or the whole family, Chevy is a great selection of SUVs of all sizes with sleek and comfortable interiors and top tier technology and safety features. Check out the latest offers on Chevy Equinoxes, Blazers, Trex, and find your local dealer at ChevyDriveChicago.com. One more time, ChevyDriveChicago.com. They'll get you locked in. Go ahead over there. Uh, other Bears notes. Um, obviously, we're talking about the commanders. We made a trade. Mm-hmm. Second rounder, Montez Sweat. Um, I don't know. I, I'm very mixed on I it. am too. And I try not to be Eeyore because obviously Montez Sweat's good. He's yeah. a very productive player. It's nothing against him. It's more I think against that's like clear. the timeline. Of yes, it. yeah. it's against the timeline. It's uh, because obviously we're not in a competitive right. window. Mm-hmm. He needs an extension. Yep. And like we do a better brain, From we Claypool. just traded a second rounder. Yeah. yeah. So you mix in all those things, it's like ah. And it's also like, and we said that I think you made this point yesterday at off camera, but it's like if you trade for him now, and then polls, like he and his agent know polls will look like an absolute fucking idiot if he doesn't re-sign him. Bears have no leverage. He's going to, like, I suppose I could slap a franchise tag on him. They have that leverage. But th- he's going to be able to get a nice deal mm-hmm. as opposed to keeping your second-round pick, waiting for the season to end. That second-round pick is going to be 35th overall, something like that, most likely. And then this is, like, a very, at this moment, and sure, guys could resign, and you never know how it's going to play out. But as things stand right now, there's a shit ton of, very good edge rushers, including him, including Chase Young, uh, Burns from Carolina, Daniil Hunter from Minnesota. All of those guys are hitting the free agent um, market this, you know, after the season. Where like last year, like there just weren't really a ton of guys to go get as far as defensive ends were concerned. There are this time around, so you didn't necessarily have to make that move now. So if you don't sign him, or is this the? Do you want to go get Leonard Williams again? Yeah, no, th- these are the guys good that will go in. But, but like Daniel Hunter's good, Carl Lawson's Williams. not very good. Um Gawkway, no. But look at that. Uh thinking Leonard Floyd. Only... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You Leonard were thinking Floyd. Leonard Floyd. Um but uh J- Josh Allen's available. Uh you know, there are there are other guys who can bring Bilal Nichols back. Um but there you know, there's there's like a handful of guys that you know we we'd like to have uh via free via free agency that you could have made a move to get without getting up a second round pick how do you feel about would you rather have chase young for a third or or montez sweat for a second there was a tweet out there so you tell me this was the logic behind it okay supposedly according to espn's jeremy fowler the chicago bears offer to oh oh, sorry wrong tweet uh according to dan graziano from espn uh the bears will make an effort to sign montez sweat at the end of the season and uh, I'm reading the fucking wrong thing. Hold on. One second. Oh, here it is. 
Uh, Peter King said on Parkinson Spiegel that Chase Young only garnered a third round pick because he was seen as a pure rental, <coughs> while Montez Sweat garnered a second rounder because he was seen as easier to sign and extend. Why would he be easier to sign and extend? I don't know. Maybe you, they would have to explain that further to me. Uh, like, aren't they on the same contract status? Uh, that I don't know. I mean, they're 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 both guys who are pending free agents. Uh, Chase Young's a little uh, younger, but he's been had he's had more injuries. They've both been productive this year. I don't know. It feels like. Well, also the Commanders are three and five. Bears are two and six. Mm -hmm. So. They're in a spot as well where they need a defensive foundational piece too, and obviously they're probably going to fire Rivera at the end of the year. Yeah. Why? Like, I wonder why they didn't see him as the guy to kind of extend and build with. Maybe they know it's more of a tear. Like they're going to be bad again next year, so it's like, what's the point of but paying? We're going to be bad again too. You know, that's what I'm saying. Where, but I, I think if you're polls, and you're like, hey, like we're we're in the Maybe maybe the the commanders are where the Bears were last year, and and Poles is like, all right, we're in year two. It's not going well on the field, but we've added Darnell Wright, we've added a couple of linebackers who have not been very good. We have Stevenson, we have Gordon, we have Brisker. Like we, we're 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 in the building phase, and they're in a teardown phase. I could see that being an argument because they're going to have a whole new regime come in. Let's just stockpile as many picks and whatever we can for our new regime because let's say like you know that and that's like the other thing about about getting Montez Sweat he's a he's like a pure hand in the ground kind of 4-3 defensive end are you that's what Eberflus runs is he going to be the coach next year are you are you are, are you it. are you getting a guy who might not fit the next system theoretically like that's possible yeah so I don't know it's been uh it's tough around here. I, I, I like the player. <laughs> I like the player. I like the player too, yeah. but I don't know. At don't some know. point, we got to figure out what the fuck's going on with this defense. They're so bad. This, I and mean, there's this been is, effort put into building it. Yeah. All right. If this doesn't work, you know, if he's not good. Yeah. All right. Then, like, what's going on with their DBs? Like, we've. I think you could argue. Put good draft capital into that fucking yeah. position group. Same thing with our defensive line. And yeah. we put through money at two linebackers. Like, what the fuck is wrong? Someone tell me, please. Yeah. Because the whole unit sucks ass. Yeah. But it, but right? it's like, it does. It does. But it's yeah. like, there are. But I should be excited about some of these guys. I'm not excited about anyone anymore. I like Brisker, but like. But it's like. What the fuck? Same, same sort of thing. So I like, more, I like more than. He's not I, dude, though. It's like everything comes back to like the defense is like every level is linked, you know? So it's like. It totally is. So you would need in the, what's been their biggest, what's been their worst position group and their gl biggest glaring weakness on defense? Defensive line. I Front would, seven. I would, I would say that D line is pathetic. Yannick Ngakwe has been awful. Billings has been good. Billing, he's Billings, been is, yeah, Billings he's been has been pretty good. And they got the two rookies who were grading on a curve because they're rookies. And so if you drafted heavily and signed Billings, you you can't get they don't get off the passer at all. At all. So now you have a guy who can do that, which makes the Brisker, Gordon, Stevenson, Jalen Johnsons of the world look a little bit better because yep. you know, so Pressure what the fuck, Ryan yeah. Poles? You gave Demarcus Walker three years, twenty one million. You yeah, waited till the bum. end to sign in Gakway for one year's ten million. Yeah. You drafted like evaluate your job. Did you think that would be enough? It was not. And it, But it's maybe he knew terrible. it. Maybe he knew that it wasn't gonna like yeah, like this is it's slim pickings at defensive end. So we'll wait till the next class because we're you know you know, when there's more guys available. And Edmonds hasn't looked great. He's been a, he's been mm. a dog. Yeah, he's been a dog. Edwards kind of a dog too. Yeah, I thought, he, he had some good. really he had some glaringly Sam bad Warren moments. Hasn't been good. He can't like in the screen in the flat. Yeah. Like he can't a whole front seven. I'm yeah, not, like I'm not ready to. I agree with Dave. I'm not ready to just throw the D line under the bus. Linebackers haven't looked great either. I agree. I I think they've all. Uh, let me clarify. They've all looked bad. But I think adding a player like Sweat it, it can make them all. Down look better yeah. and put them in better positions. So. And then that leads us to the other discussion with the Bears is with Jalen Johnson extension. I'd probably extend him. They're going to have $95 million or whatever in cap space. Just fucking pay him. 
Listen, I think Jalen Johnson's a good player. I don't know yeah. what he's asking for. Same. Reported the Bears kind of lowballed him. You don't say. I mean that. You think they might learn their lesson from the Roquan Smith thing? Listen, though. No. no, that's not. What? Roquan Smith's premier. Jalen Johnson's a good player. But they lowballed him. He's a homegrown yeah, guy. No, they I, ran yeah, him yeah. out. They got us. They got. And they, I get the ad is you can't trade everyone. You need to start accepting. You need guys if you want to build yeah. this thing. You can't just you, draft picks don't. Like play, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like they players play, mm-hmm. but stuff we hear, and I, this is you know we don't want to throw him under the bus. But I'm talking like, Jalen, yeah, I've heard some. Is he's a little rougher on the edges? <laughs> I've heard that. I've heard that. Uh, you know, and this could have changed from the time that I heard it. This is like a year or two ago, but he was not like the most dedicated guy. Like you know kind of dragging late to meetings and stuff like that but he's effective on the field yeah he is effective yeah. and that is at the end of the day that's what matters yeah so like sure if they want as long to ex- as he's not a complete asshole uh, yeah yeah he's lazy that's one thing if he's awesome on the field so yeah from a player standpoint i want to extend him but the only the only reason why i bring that up is for a reason of maybe why they didn't do it yeah it's like possible. Is, is that an yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very possible because he, I would say that Jalen Johnson's probably never had to be a leader on this defense, and if he becomes your highest paid player on defense, you're automatically a leader. That's just the way it goes. So if if you're like, hey, like we wanted this guy to be like the tone setter for our defense, and everybody looking to him because he got the big money, and he just doesn't have like those those types of traits. Maybe I could I could see that, but. Um, I don't know. He's a good player. And it's just like you also have, if you're not going to sign him, you have to replace him. Yeah. And trying to re- tr- replace Roquan, even though it's at a lower number, has not worked. No. And you want to talk about things that Roquan does well, covers running backs well, covers tight ends well, blitzes. He's a phenomenal blitzer. You probably could have schemed up some things to get some pressure Side with, line with, with he's Roquan. He's a phenomenal linebacker. Yeah, he really he's is. He's probably the – Best linebacker in football, one of them. PFF was grading him out as the as the top guy um, this year at one point. I don't know if it he is, still it is. is second last I looked. Yeah, so he, I mean, he's an he's an yeah, elite player. He's elite, which is why you draft him in the top the, ten. I honestly, I really think the defense would look like infinitely better with him in it. Him Sanborn, yeah. like it was last year, like it made Sanborn look good. Sanborn's been bad. Sanborn kind of he's how much bad. Did, how much did they overlap together? Um, just I feel like, like Sam games spot. or whatever before what? they dealt. Yeah, I feel like Sam Ward went into they his yeah. spot. They, no, they there, was, the there was overlap. There was overlap for sure. They were on the field together. I don't remember them on the field. I, mean, together. I remember but Sam Ward's season was born out of the trade. Yeah, okay. I but I remember yeah. Sam Ward playing well at points last year, and he hasn't at this year. Is my point. Yeah, and but like I, I he's do, also uh, kind of playing out of position a little bit with these signings. Like he was more of like a Mike Hammerhead downhill, where they kind of have. Uh, Edwards for that, so they have they have him at will. Yeah, yeah. Well, the good news for the Bears is that it took the Chicago Bulls all of one game to uh, join the circus with them. Yeah, be completely dysfunctional. That's yeah. funny though. I, I laughed at that. It was it was hilarious. Come on, they, they've that won not funny? two games. They're two and one since yeah. their players yeah, only yeah, meeting. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. And Mark Eversley said the players meeting after game one was a positive thing. So our guys were embarrassed by their performance and for the fans in the city. The fact that they took it upon themselves to talk some things out is very encouraging. You would just. Maybe that was a good thing. Maybe they're, maybe it's true. You know, yeah, they did win too. So here, the, the only counter to that is like, and maybe you could say you nipped it in the bud, but like you, you, you open the season with that. You can't, you know, like, I feel like that's something you're like, Hey, like in January, like this isn't good yeah. enough. <laughs> Yeah, but like everybody, night one is typically ready to go. It's night one. Yeah, they're chomping at the bit to get out. Yeah, yeah, two and two start. Yeah, uh, Bulls guy Danny, anything? I mean, I'm all out on the Patrick Williams experiment. I'll yeah, say that no, based on his numbers, and he was he was asking for 200 mil. Like he, the Bulls are already being ridiculous by putting like no trades on him after they're tripling down. You know, he hasn't really amounted to anything. They're doubling down on him. But then for him to have the attitude, like, I deserve 200 mil after getting, what, like three rebounds, single-digit points, I'm out on Patrick Williams. I'll say that. I mean, he said all the right things in the offseason, how he said he needed to uh, be uh, the guy more. Two. Yeah. Yeah, he needed to be the guy more. He knows he needed to score, and he needed to kind of take over. 
uh, opening night, eight points. What has he done? What he finished with against the Pacers? Five and three hey, a game right hey, now. Hey, Ed, an apology without change is just manipulation. Is that what they say? That's what they say. Yeah, I've never heard true. that line before, but three I think points that that's in the second game. You've never heard that line. That's I haven't. It's very commonly said, and it is very true. And you know, he, he, for the human element, if he's not performing, if he's disappointed in himself, I get that. But then don't be See, asking for two hundred mil. Zero points in game three. Holy fuck! What do you, what do, you do against the Pacers? Let's see. I'm looking for the game logs here. He, he might have had a game where he, you know, nine. So yeah, he's not yeah. Had I, I did say see him. Like, actually, William really nine points by like plus one twenty, which is fucking there crazy. He's a yeah. starter. Yeah, I would say that he. Yeah, twenty two <laughs> minutes too. He Just, might not be the next Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, let's start no? there. Yeah, <laughs> you don't say. Yeah, in eighty six minutes. Yeah, not not great. But I did. I watched maybe like ten minutes of that of the Bulls Pacers game, and I note he was noticeably more aggressive. He didn't score, mm-hmm. but he was like he took it to the hole a couple times. It rimmed out like, and then I feel like they just put him back on the bench. But yeah, he's definitely like afraid to shoot. He yeah. was last year big time too, which you can't have that. And we I mean, we can't not mention Zach Levine fifty one points, four rebounds, zero, zero assists. <laughs> That's our guy. That's fine. Hey, yeah. you want to put a 51 points? Fine. You won't hear me bitching about you. Yeah. True. Um, we should know we, we're shortly going to get to our interview with uh, former Bull Max Struess, all of two games, all of. He scored his first career point with the Bulls. Yeah. Yeah. So, kind of wish that they would have given him the bag. Yeah, that would have been nice. Bulls probably better. Maybe they should offer Patrick Williams or Struess straight up. See what they say. <laughs> I think and so. Insult the Struess. Yeah, but like maybe, maybe, the, maybe Cleveland's dumb. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we'll get into that. Should have said that off the top of the show, but regardless, it was great to chop it up with him. Such a phenomenal story. Oh, I love it. Yeah. And he's like one of the boys. Yeah, Like, we is. could bust his balls a little bit. We said how much he loved COVID. He didn't, like, blanket that. He thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. So it was, yeah. it was good. No, he's the man. So we'll get into that, though. Uh, before we do, I want to talk to you about the hat on my head. Uh, a new sponsor for this show. And Hoss. That's Hoss. It's a fucking great name. Be the Hoss. Great name is right, dude. Um, you don't know about these guys? They're a Chicago-based company, and have a, just a great story. Yeah. Just, just someone was like, "Hey, Hoss, like that's a sweet name." It was available, and they started a clothing brand. Out yeah, of it. It, it is it, so just genuine and just something spur of the moment. It's awesome. Started as like a something to do during COVID, and now they're growing it into a legit business. Like they they came in here maybe a month ago, something yeah. like that. They're mm-hmm. in here, great dudes. Uh, you know, one of them was a South Side guy, like through and through. He it. looks like he like oh, he's never central, left Central Cast. He's a Mount Carmel guy. Yeah. yeah, great guy. So really, really good dudes. Yes, and, and I'll tell you too. Like you, I mean, if you've been watching, I've been wearing these hats a lot these a last, whole this last month or so. Yeah. yeah, super comfortable. Super hey, comfortable. Tell them about the stitches, guy. Ed. We're all hat guys. What do you mean the stitches? Oh, so a lot of know. shitty hats will have like the the stitching on the front on, on the belt on the brim. Yeah, we'll have it'll be three rows of it. A quality made hat has four. I think is the, six. the numbers or something. It's more than Haas has six. Haas has six. I like and the that. Rest I have must, have, I must have not heard that. Yeah, from it doesn't Wait. stop there. They got joggers. They got sweatpants. They got uh, their own golf. Collection. I haven't really left. The joggers haven't left my body too often. Yeah, the sweatpants the are unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievably comfortable sweatpants. Yeah. Go off, Lance. Go there off. we go, Lance. I like that. So whether you're hitting the gym, going to work out, or out of out in the town, it's time to gear up, step out, and show the world what it means to be the Haas. Like I said, born and raised in Chicago, Haas is an athleisure slash street brand, streetwear brand that is something for everyone. I gotta say, that hat does sit cool. well on your. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, I, truly, they're they're great stuff. So go to be the Haas dot com. Check out their athletic line and leisure wear. One more time, be the Haas dot com. Use code Barstool for twenty percent off the whole store and be the Haas today. And that's H O S S. Yep. With that said, let's toss it over to another man Struce. who is uh, from near the south side of Chicago, Max Struess. Dave. Whoosh. Thank you. All right, then. Here we are. We're in the interview portion of the show. We are joined by uh, Cleveland Cavalier, Max Struess, and friend of the program. People don't know. If you watch the stool scenes from uh, the Chicago uh, NASCAR, NASCAR event. Yeah. Max, we were we, we were your first interview. Is that right? 
Yeah. Like one Ever. of them at least. Yeah, first podcast, first interview, first thing on my social media. Yeah, it was definitely. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Us three idiots. Yeah, yep. exactly. What's going on, so, dude? You've come a long way. Yeah, things are a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are things? Things going well? Yeah. <laughs> things are going real well. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been, a, it's been a hell of a journey since that day uh, back in the old priority office. But uh, things are going well. I'm happy to, happy to be on here with you guys again. Dude, so fucking crazy. I mean, we talked to a bunch of guys that whole weekend. Um, like you were obviously slated to you, like, you were always pretty much, you were maybe second around, but probably undrafted. And yeah. some of those guys were first rounders and like, you've, you've kind of just like paved a great way. So congrats a little to you, funny dude. thing, Max and I ran into each other on a Southwest flight to Boston when you were going to sign your contract with them <laughs> and you were chewed up and spit out by a handful of teams at that point or including the bulls, obviously. And yeah. and here we are, our our little Southside boy is grown up and and spread his wings and putting in almost twenty a game right now. Yeah, no, it's been a hell of a start this year too. Uh, I mean, I'm like damn near averaging a double double right now, mm-hmm. but obviously it's only three games, so we've had some guys out, which has helped with that. But no, we got a good team over here. It's going to be a fun year once we get everybody healthy. Do you remember that? Remember when you were on the Bulls, man? I do. <laughs> you why, your first why do you say it like game? that why do you say it like that those two games i do man i wish it worked out man you yeah. guys know me i'm i'm home all summer I'm, I'm a chicago guy i wish it worked out but do you think the bulls could use a guy who can get a, a 20 and 10 which is basically what you have now they could yeah. probably use that yeah, yeah is there any part of you that's like hey look at me now you know oh for sure yeah that like that's any yeah, athlete right yeah yeah no definitely yeah, I mean, I was kind of – honestly, I was expecting them to come this summer with something. I mean, I, I thought they were going to try to have me free agency, like try to come and get me, but they showed a little interest, but, yeah, nothing nothing they, they, really – They decided uh, to go a different direction, sign nobody instead. <laughs> At all. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you think there's any part of um, the Bulls that kind of didn't want to admit their mistake – and because they had you under contract for what could have been for four years at, you know, dirt cheap, figuratively yeah. speaking. And now they're going to have to, if they want to even acquire you, offer you a boatload of money. Yeah, I mean, it, there's probably something there. Um, I think that year um, I, I tore my ACL when I was coming yeah. back from that was the year they hired Billy was the year they hired the new, uh, you know, Arcturus and uh, Mark up in the front office. So it was a whole new regime coming in. I just. I don't know, maybe they were going a different direction, wanted to clean house and didn't know my game as well coming off an injury. I mean, it, it was definitely a risk, so um, no hard feelings, but obviously it worked out for me. So Yeah, big time. I'm, yeah. I'm doing well. What, yeah. do you, what do you think was like the big turning point, though? Where Because really, when you're kind of in, in the G League or, or whatever it's called now, it's kind of like you, you just want an opportunity. Was Do you remember like the time where Miami really like just gave you a shot and, and like things just kind of came yeah. to fruition? So that my first year in Miami, I was on a two way mm-hmm. um, and that was like the year right after like the COVID. So there was no fans in the stands and all that. So we actually our G League team didn't even play. Uh, they didn't have a G League team that year because the G League did a bubble in Vegas and uh, Miami didn't want to pay to have their team in the G League bubble. So I was actually fortunate enough to be with the Heat all year as a two way, which is kind of unheard of. And, and, and that allowed opportunity you know when i was up you guys were hurt um i was just there and i was on the bench and spo would give me a chance so i think that that year was was huge um so i kind of you know thank covid for giving me the opportunity um to get some reps there in the regular season and kind of you know earn some some stripes with it with the main guys and um have the coaches be more familiar with me so Wait, there's well, there's the quote yeah. for the headline max yeah. truce thankful for covid yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah perfect what was uh Honestly, that was too well, i tore my acl and like the season shut down so like it was like oh all right i guess we got covid <laughs> like uh, i'm not missing any basketball anyway so for real yeah. you just be a good time to be hurt yep max true's big covid guy <laughs> huge covid guy <laughs> wishes it would come back <laughs> yeah bring it back let's go back to quarantine yeah. i'm ready yeah. yeah exactly what uh what did spo like what do you think like spo what caught hit your his eye like with you you know what i mean where did it kind of where was the the match made um i don't know i wish you guys could ask him that question but uh you want to facetime him 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh my first year i mean i my first training camp i i actually like played phenomenal like i really didn't miss a shot like it was unreal like i played really well um earned my contract and then throughout the season just whenever my name was called i was ready and, and just made it uh take advantage of every opportunity that i got um i maybe that's where he just you know gained some respect of just you know i wouldn't play for three games and then he'd throw me in there and i would you know be productive so i think he was just like all right this kid's you know, a professional comes to work every day, um, does the right stuff, is about the right stuff. And, you know, every time I've called on him, he's answered. So uh, I think throughout that that process, I've kind of earned his respect and earned a lot of the guys in the locker room's respect during that year. After signing the, the, the big deal this summer, you're coming in, you're, you're older now. Do you feel like an obligation where, like, I have to be a, a certain type of leader, I'm expected to do different things? Is there more pre- Do you feel more pressure uh, as as one of the guys in um, Cleveland as opposed to being on yeah. a stack team down there? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say it's pressure, um, but there's definitely, um, you know, I'm going into year five, you know, I got a decent paycheck. And I think that the biggest thing is all the experience that I've had so far. You know, the past two years I've played in the Eastern Conference Finals to game seven, lost, and then last year played Eastern Conference Finals, won game seven and played in the finals. So, um, you know, I have a lot of experience that a lot of NBA players don't even get you know, to even come close to during their whole careers. So, mm-hmm. and I've done that in my short five year career. So having those experiences, being able to share that knowledge with, with the guys here that, um, you know, unfortunately had a, a first round, you know, exit to the Knicks last year, um, just bringing that experience and, and everything that I gained from that is, is something that I want to do and something I want to bring to this team to make it better. Do you have a, a specific example of something that you would do or tell to a young kid that like you would tell young Max Struess when he was at DePaul or something? It could be, you know, either mental or physical in the game, like something that you just, you know, lob up to him and be like, hey, you got to do this differently, that differently, et cetera, et cetera. Honestly, it the – 90% of the NBA is just being mentally tough. Uh, it's like dealing with bullshit, to be honest with you. That's that's like a majority of it. Everybody that gets here is talented. Yeah. Everybody that plays college basketball is super talented and, and can play at this level. It's just once you get here, can you deal with, you know, the bullshit? And can you deal with, you know, not playing in a couple games or, you know, reducing your role? You know, you're coming from college and you're a 20 points per game scorer. Can you now, you know, come in and defend and maybe shoot – open threes like that's just your job like that's what the team needs you to do can you trick your mind to you know like this is how i have to do things now i think that's the biggest thing is is to play the mental game and um you know just to to be positive through it all i mean there's a lot of ups and downs through it but the 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 guys that can stay mentally stable through everything are the guys that last in this league respectfully to lewis what what was a standard crowd when you'd go out there at Lewis? Yeah, at Lewis. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I don't even think our gym set more than 1,000 people. I, I honestly don't. Maybe 350 in the stands. Yeah, so all 350, 350, and yeah, then parents. you're you're in the NBA Finals with Jimmy right. Butler in the Miami. Five, yeah, five <laughs> years like, after dude, that, yeah. That's fucking insane. Like, did you, it, did you it, ever yeah, get that, yeah. or were you, like, were you always pretty, like, uh, in the moment? Honestly, um, you know, walking out in the Finals – um before game one kind of like my shoot around times like it was like all right like this is this is the real deal <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. there's like um and honestly i didn't even play well in game one i was freaking terrible but um i wouldn't accredit that to like the atmosphere i just think it was that was kind of just like an eye-opening experience just to like kind of take it all in to you know understand where i've came from and um you know just to be grateful to be in that that opportunity in that then that spotlight that's, it's crazy, dude. And, and obviously, Lewis, DePaul, uh, and then G League. What was the first time you met Jimmy like, dude? <laughs> I, well, you guys know. like You guys are Chicago people. Like, we love Jimmy Butler. Yeah. yeah. Oh, dude. yeah. We love Jimmy Butler. When I was growing up, it was playoff Jimmy and, you know, playoff Derrick Rose. Like, that was mm-hmm. the, the team I grew up watching. So, um, for me, it was – I couldn't wait to meet him. And then he was just, like, the, the coolest dude when I met him. Like, you know, he came up and introduced himself to me. I was like – Dude, I, I I fucking know you're Jimmy Butler, like you know, <laughs> as Jimmy Butler, like. Uh, but no, ever since like I met him, he he kind of took me under his wing, and um, you know he's he's a, a huge reason as to why I've been so successful in the NBA too. Like I credit him a lot um, to my success of him, like kind of bringing me in and um, you know 
having the the respect for me enough to to play alongside of him and um you know to be a guy on his team that you know he high, he holds his teammates to high standards so uh you know to be able to play alongside of him was uh something uh, did he was amazing yeah honestly did he do a good job of like because obviously like you know him and him and bam were were the guys right but yeah. did he do a good job to the rest of you martin and everyone who was really stepped up to get you guys where you guys needed to be where you guys got like being like hey you guys deserve to be here like was he like what, what kind of guy was he as far as that yeah absolutely i mean he kind of had that experience too you know he was kind of like a Nobody really talked about him mm-hmm. coming up. It kind of took him a couple yeah. years to like make a name for himself. Mm-hmm. So like he kind of knew what we were going through. You know, he didn't play his first year. Like he, he, you know, worked his ass off to be where he was. So he had the, all all the respect in the world for guys like me, Gabe and Caleb. Um, and he made sure to tell us that you know he didn't really treat us like we were you know undrafted you know bums. Like he he was like I respect you guys. I I know you guys can play. I know you guys can help us win. Um, so he was always great to us. Always. Yeah. That's fucking sweet, man. I, I remember we were rooting for you guys. It was yeah, it, yeah. The Nuggets are just so fucking good. <laughs> They're they are good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dude, that, that big fella. Yeah, yeah. dude. How good is he? What do you say? How good is he, Jokic? He's phenomenal. Honestly, <laughs> um, dude. it just seemed like everything we threw at him, he had an answer for. I mean, it was. His IQ is, is second to none. I mean, you threw a double team at him. He knew exactly where the ball had to go. And uh, I think their organization has done a good job putting pieces around him, you know, smart enough guys that can play with him and knock down open shots when he throws them the ball. So mm-hmm. uh, you know, they, that, was, that was a tough task for sure. I thought Bam did a, a hell of a job on him. But still, I mean, just the way he plays the game, he's just so smart and he just makes the right read every single time. Yeah, he doesn't look like he should be the best player in the league. Like, yeah, you know, like just looks. He looks like a guy that should be like six five, selling insurance at like right. LA Fitness, and he just, just it's unbelievable. I'm sure he'll say that a lot about me too. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, probably. And then you talk about just knowing what to do, like, and their their game plans. I mean, going back to Spolstra, is he all that is advertised? Like, how prepared is that guy? How do you Phenomenal. like playing for him? Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, he's he's really good. Definitely a Hall of Famer. Um, learned a lot from him and, and and prepared like being prepared is like an understatement for him. Like he over prepares. That guy's in his office nonstop. Like that's this is his his life. He 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 really dedicates everything he does to this to be you know the best. And um, yeah, I, I was very fortunate to play for a coach like that. Yeah. What was what was the free agency process like coming out of uh, coming out of Miami? Like were you were you like blown away by like the offers? Like how many, who, where else did you look? Like how close did you get yeah. with going somewhere else? Well, obviously like you go to, a, you go to the finals of the team. Like you want to go back. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to go back with that team yeah. and try to do it again. Um, but unfortunately, you know, it's a business and um, there's not, <laughs> there's a lot of money out there, but unfortunately not enough um, to keep everybody around. So uh I knew shortly after the season was over, I probably wasn't going to go back to Miami. So kind of um, opened my eyes to other options. And we kind of like made a list of some teams that had some money available. And uh, we knew it could work out and would be a good situation for me with me and my agent. And, um, you know, once the phone started ringing, it was kind of like, all right, which which situation do we think is going to be best for you? And uh it, it felt like a no brainer to be here in Cleveland with, you know, everything that they had here already last year and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, adding what I do on the floor as a, you know, floor spacer and a, and a shooter is just, you know, what these guys needed here. So it just, it felt like a, an easy fit and it's, it's been an easy fit so far. And on that note, you just said um, basketball and sports as a whole is a business. How hard is it going from like, I mean, and you just said you grew up watching Jimmy Butler. You fucking love the bulls. Like, going from just being a basketball fan to kind of having to cope with it being a business. Like you just said, you wanted to go and finish what you started with Miami, but you couldn't because it's a business. Like, does that change? Does that like give you a, a yucky feeling in, in your mouth or is it just is what it is? You've accepted it or is it like, what yeah, I mean, it kind of just is what it is. I mean, I, I just knew what going into it, what it was going to be like. Um, there's no bad blood be, be, between me and Miami, like at all. Mm-hmm. Like it just wasn't going to work out, like with the with the money and and how things were situated. So, 
Um, it, it does suck for things like that, but you're in this business to, you know, play basketball and, you know, I, I play a game for a living. So at the end of the day, I'm not really mad about anything. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I make a lot of money doing it. So, well, we looked I'm, it up. You I'm would be the, sport. if you were a hockey player, you'd be the highest paid player in the NHL by like $4 million a year. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice little fun fact for you. Give that money to Bedard. Or sooner or later, this I, yeah. I think he could get up in the, the Max Struess era someday <laughs> in that, in that echelon of cat. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe well, in like seven and all that. Yeah. Like yeah. seven, eight years from now and the cap goes right. up, he might New get TV that deal. Yeah, yeah, they'll, they'll, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you brought One up money. another Chicago team. You got the bears. What do you got for our, our other division two superstar Tyson Bajant? What do you like about it? That was him? awesome. I mean, Last night was tough to watch, but um, I didn't think he looked as bad. I think he's been good. I mean, yeah. I don't honestly. I still think Fields is good, though. I'm I'm a fan of Justin Fields, so I, I do think he's capable of of being a good quarterback. I know you guys are. We're wavering. <laughs> I've been wavering. out for a while. Yeah. Uh, I get it, but I don't know. I just think it's tough with new regime, like new coaches, new systems, like. That kind of messes with guys' heads. I mean, if if he's not comfortable out there, he's not going to be his best. So yeah, I agree. With I that. kind of feel for the kid. Do you, does being a, a pro athlete kind of change the way you are as a fan of the other sports? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Is that unfortunate or no? Do you want to bitch about how much you fucking hate the White Sox and how they do nothing <laughs> right? Because I I planned on bringing that up to you, or do you just not care anymore? Because. I'll You're catch myself. Like I was watching the the Bears game, and I'm like, somebody dropped the ball, and I'm like, fucking catch the goddamn yeah. ball. It was and I'm like, Jones. All right, yeah. People are probably yelling at me when I like miss a three. Yeah, so yeah. like I like I'm gonna relax and let this guy off the hook. Like what yeah. are we doing? <laughs> did you have uh, speaking of Jimmy and growing up watching him? Did you have another like holy fuck welcome to the NBA moment? Like playing against LeBron or like, did someone like get swat the, your shit someone, out of the air? Someone dunk on your ass? Yeah. Like, what, what's, um, I've gotten ducked on a couple of times, but that wasn't my welcome to the NBA moment. Um, I got two things. My first game I ever played in um, or like stepped on the floor was in Portland for the Bulls. Uh, he, they like brought me up randomly on like Thanksgiving Day. I had to fly to Portland and they threw me in the game for like 30 seconds. I don't know what was that. Jim Boylan was like trying to make a, a statement to one of like the guards that like if you're not going to play defense, you're not going to play. And he like threw me in to, for 30 seconds. Hey you! Uh, and Carmelo Anthony is. like was like, <laughs> like come on, like give me the ball. like I got this kid on me. Like what are we doing? Uh, um, and luckily somebody else fouled somebody like on the other side of the floor, and then Jim Boylan took me back out. So it was literally like less <laughs> he was like he was uh, he was like I. This, this fucking we Carmelo just, like, just saw red meat. Yeah. This fucking, this, yeah, exactly. this fucking yeah, guy. Little little whistle. First LeBron, I played against LeBron in LA and I, I like boxed him out pretty hard and he didn't like that. Um, and then he like, he kind of like threw an elbow in my chest. It was like, what, like, what the fuck are you doing? Hit me this hard. And then he hit me in my chest. I felt that in my chest for probably like three days. I mean, that guy's huge. It's unbelievable. Yeah. He's just so strong. Yeah, he's a, um, he's a monster. But yeah, that was like my first LeBron moment. But honestly, now that I've like been playing and uh, against these guys and I'm comfortable, like I don't really have any of those moments anymore. You're a vet. Like, yeah. Do you got a yeah. Do you got a villain in the league? Not someone you hate, like personally. Obviously, you you hate playing against them, and and you respect. At the same time, you respect the shit out of them. Someone that's not obviously a LeBron level. Yeah. Just like little uh, scrappy um, guy that you're like, man, this fucking guy. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Honestly, I hated guarding Darius Garland um, mm. when we played here. Like, I, I couldn't stand guarding. It was, like, the only guy in the league, like, I couldn't, like, stay in front of. He's so fast and twitchy. Like, so thankfully, I don't have to do that anymore. Yeah, that's nice. Just every day in practice. Yeah. <laughs> I usually on his team. So okay. All right. I think that worked. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um. Well, damn, dude. It was honestly great to catch up. We got to get you in the office too once you come back. For we're, sure, we're gonna be. You in guys the new... all done at the new setup over there? Is it all finished? Think pretty it's much. This, this is our last week in this in this office, so we'll be uh we'll be working on our, on our own jump shots. So we'll have to play horse or something when we come through. Yeah, you guys got a like a court and everything, right? Oh, yeah. Full yeah, court. Yeah. yeah. Can I rent some times out to work out next summer or what, man? It's what yours. Doing? You don't have oh, to if, rent it if you uh agree to like sub in on a, a pickup team that i have then you're in like i just want you to show up that would be, yeah just, and you just have to stand guy. in the corner we'll get you the ball that's fine yeah i, I could shoot some corner threes for you guys yeah yeah that'd be great 
at work. Yeah, why don't you why don't you show us your your sweatshirt you got on there too? Oh yeah, can you see this? Yeah. So what? Uh, wish forever, hoogie. Yeah. Uh, wish forever. Wish fest coming up this weekend. Yep. I wish to be there, but for some reason they always plan it in the winter months when I can't go. So I'm working, we're working on changing that so I can. Okay. Take it <laughs> one of these days. Everything. Everything's about Max. Let's put this event. Back. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, how, that's how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday. Where can get people? Where can people get tickets? Yeah. It's wish forever. Uh, I'll pull up the website. We'll put it in the in the description as well. But it's something that we care a lot about. Max obviously cares a lot about. Great concert, Natasha Bedingfield, Randy Hauser, Plain White Tees, Low Cash. It's American a, it, authors. Yep. It's, a, it's a who's who. Um, we're all going to be there. We wish Max could be there. Uh, but obviously, right. it's something near and dear to his heart. So just wishfest.com. You can click on tickets. It's a great deal. You get in at, you get in at 4.30, uh, open bar. You just stay there all day. We're going to have the college football on. Uh, it's going to be great. It, midnight. If you've been looking for an excuse to check out the salt shed, yep, this yeah. is it. Yes. You're paying 150 bucks. Yep, to drink for five hours and eat, eat, listen and to music, hang out it, directly to families battling cancer. Yes, yep, it's the move. For it's, sure. it's an awesome experience. I, I was lucky to go back in college, and honestly, I haven't been back since. But just like the way that they present the money to the mm-hmm. families at the concert, too, like it just makes you feel like you're really you know, doing something and, and everybody sharing that experience together. It's, it's a really heartwarming uh, time. I'm sure you guys have experienced as well. Yeah. Heartwarming tear jerking. And it's like, we have like with a couple of families, like we've just established like, yeah. Fr- yeah. Friendships and mm-hmm. good relationships. The Rogers with. family, so the Rogers yep. family yeah. specifically. Uh, so it, it is great. I, I, everybody needs to come out for this. This is, this is like the party of the year. First time in the city too. It's going to be a yep. blast. Yep. Yeah. So sorry. You can't make it, but it is the party <laughs> yeah. of the year. Yeah. Are you guys we'll playing that you. night? Um, Saturday the, f- the night before, I think. Okay. Oh, so just get yourself a little PJ after, but yeah, a little PJ. Yeah, maybe, maybe next <laughs> yeah. Year. yeah. Although, my, my first paycheck hasn't hit yet, so maybe okay. Next. All right, fair, fair. <laughs> I got a PJ guy, by the way. That's what my brother does. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll right, get you. We'll get, yeah, we'll, we'll get you a deal. Your yeah, has have, PJs you, now? Yeah. have you bought anything stupid yet or no? I bought a house, that's, so that's nice. Yeah. Um, but. What kind of square no. footage are we working with over there? <laughs> what do you say? What kind of square footage are we working with? It's I got a sixteen hundred square foot two bed two bath. Not to brag. About it's, the same. Uh, I don't know the square foot on top of my head, but it's a it's a four bed four four and a half bath. It's it's got some space. There you go. Nice. Yeah. yeah. You got Definitely. a chef. I heard from sources. I do have a chef. That's that's yeah. that, that would be changing. my. It's, uh, it's a life that I can definitely get used to. I'll tell you that. Oh yeah. Much. Well, now, are you eating not, healthier? Are you that's, just eating that's like, like a business expense, surf and turf. You can write night. that off. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Can you actually? Yeah. I was joking. No, you actually can. Yeah. God damn. Really? So that's something yeah. I, I I would never be able to do. Even if I got super wealthy, they'd be like, you're not your body's not worth anything. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, it's because you're an athlete. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like making me better at my job so like I can. Uh, how can that. we finagle this? Well, that's you throw 91. Yeah, I throw 91. I'm trying to be a pitcher for the White Sox next year. <laughs> Business expense, yeah. Side job. What, what's your number one requested meal from this person? Oh, um, he made a good like seared tuna last night. <laughs> that, that was solid, my guy. He yeah, he's been cooking that up. Um, Does he live with you, or did, no, like you no, just no, call no. him up and he comes? Like you don't have yeah, like I your like own... give him like a weekly schedule and he comes in. You know. That's Make amazing. Some food and, and leaves. It's not a bad. He's, he's not, not using bed. one of the four bedrooms then. That's nice. No, no, no. no. Those like, are. You don't keep them right. like stuffed in the industrial <laughs> cooler or anything. <laughs> if, no, I don't have any chef quarters yet. No, okay. no, no. Uh, uh, the no next chef. contract, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe next one. Yeah. yeah, if we ever make a trip to Cleveland, maybe we could. You know, <laughs> yeah, Ed's asking you for all. Yeah. Eddie's been Jones and Eddie's yeah. been Jones for a, a trip to Cleveland. <laughs> so, How many yeah. times has Dante the Don tried to get you to go and do his stupid clubs out there? <laughs> I haven't met Dante yet. Oh, you know? okay. oh, well, right. well, I'm sure he'll be weaseling around you shortly. <laughs> That'll in due time. Um, you guys should play. The Bears are playing here. What? Yeah, they this are. year. I, you know, I've been meaning to get to Cleveland to watch a Chicago Bears versus Cleveland <laughs> yeah. Browns football game. Big matchup. Yeah. Big Huge. Match. Who, who's yeah. going to have the number one pick? Uh, Season is probably going to be over by then, yeah. December 19th, unfortunately. Yeah. The Browns got a good record. Yeah, the Browns yeah. are actually pretty good. Yeah, yeah the Browns, are, Browns are doing well. Um, they need a quarterback, though, too. Yeah, situation. Yeah. 
Um, all right, then, Max, dude. Thanks for hopping on. Always great to sure. chat, man. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate you guys. All right, that was Struce. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like we said there at the end, go get your Wish Fest tickets. And uh, on that note, what else we got to get into? Is, is there anything, any any Bedard update, anything? Yeah, we should... the Hawks fucking stink. <laughs> they absolutely fucking stink. And they, they've played like a murderer's row schedule. We've talked about that. I, I had a tweet. This is like you say, like, I have the mush, right? Yeah. So I tweeted that I was excited to see them play. They played the other night against Arizona. I was excited to see them play against a team that doesn't have, like, Stanley Cup aspirations. Hopefully, like, a little bit more space out there for, for Bedard, and spe- especially Reichel, who's been awful to start the year. Uh, they went out and lost 8-1. to eight How to, does that even happen? 8-1 to one to Arizona. In that little shitty Melon Arena or Mullet Arena, <laughs> Mullet, Mullet yeah. Arena. Yeah, yeah, Melon was the old Penguins yeah, yeah. one, yeah. and uh, it was like Bedard had a goal, and it was a it was a really nice play. Korchinski passed it across Bedard, like sniped it all in one motion. Like it was a classic kind of Bedard shot goal, and it was like, oh fuck yeah, like let's go. It was abysmal, and uh, you know they they made a big thing um, about how they weren't competing hard enough, and. Um, Richardson like kind of put him through the meat grinder. It was like, oh, we're we're doing nothing but these two on two drills, which that is like you have like a small area, and you just basically beat the fuck out of each other battling in a small area. And it was like they were showing clips on the internet, like we're working hard, all this kind of stuff. My buddy, actually, this is a friend that you always say is fake. I don't want to say his name right now. I don't want to get him in any trouble. But he <laughs> sent me a, he sent me a text, and he was a goalie, so I don't know what the fuck he's crying about. But he sent me a text saying that when Richardson gets mad, he's like the scariest guy on the planet. And he's like, he's like, when he I, looks like a scary guy. Yeah. yeah. And he's <laughs> like, when I, when I played for him, he played for him in the minor leagues up in Binghamton. He's like, he just, he skated to us for like two hours straight, just bag skate. And Richardson also did this, the, like the punishment drills, like the skate, the bag skate. Wait, drill. wait, wait, wait. Again. What? What's Again. bag skate? Like you've seen the movie Miracle, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, Again. okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. like basically yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. It was like that. But Richardson was doing all the skating, too. So he was just not standing there on the whistle, yelling at him again. He'd be like, yell at him, you know, blow the whistle. And then Richardson would finish the drill first. <laughs> like every That's kind of yeah. badass. That's so, like fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's not because the players should be dusting their coach, but that's you would think, badass. Yeah, right. Like, and that, fuck that, these that, little fucking exactly. losers. So this, that was probably, I think, wrote, I think he was there like. 2014 maybe 2012 so like you know 10 years oh, ago Oh, that's awesome and uh um, i love that they yeah. should give me the willies yeah it's great and but like at the same time like this team they're they're kind of soft as fuck and like we i wasn't into they, they signed all these older guys veterans felino felino had an awesome fight in that game He's not soft. He beat the fuck out of this guy. But they got Felino, Perry, kind of on their on their last days in the NHL. They're all 36, 37, 38 years old, something like that. But, like, the rest of the team, like, Kershev's kind of a little bit soft. Bedard's obviously, like, a smaller skilled guy. Reichel's a, you know, they, they don't really have any, any, like, battle guys. And I've said this before. Like, I'm worried about, like, the construction of this team. Korchinski's not, you know, like he's young, yeah. he's 19, but he's not going to like punish anybody physically. The only guy that has like bite to their game in an organic way, like he's just born with it from my vantage point is Kaiser. Like Wyatt Kaiser is like, a, he's got a little nasty, he's a little nasty fuck out there. Mm-hmm. And I love that, but they don't really, ha- they, you need more than one guy. And um, so it's, they're going to, I think they're getting, they're getting bullied and, and, and outworked and and Richardson did have a nice comment when they were talking about this he's like I think we're working hard but it's not like we're not hard to play against you know like if that makes sense where it's like you want to give guys wax and you want to give guys a little extra and it's like ah like should I finish this hit send him my sh- yeah I'm gonna give him a little fuck this guy and they don't really have much of that or even like when you lose a battle just taking like one little extra swipe like there's so like much to hockey where it's just like you get an advantage from being a dickhead and making the other team uncomfortable and they don't have enough dickheads on this team. They got too many nice, you know, kind of skill, small boys and they need some guys that have some fucking bite like Andrew Shaw and even like, you know, Andrew Shaw type of guys, you know, Bickle when he was engaged, he was a fucking animal. Um, you know, they Jalmerson, they just had sharp. They were just nasty, tough guys to play against 
Taves, Hosa, even Kane. Kane was just like a guy who wouldn't be intimidated out there. He's gonna like he's gonna do his bit. And they don't they don't have like that. Is that something you learn as you grow older as a hockey player? Is that just I kind of a hockey player? I, you are, you aren't. I think that the if I think if you're on a team where that is the culture, then you feel pressured to, okay. to act yeah, as yeah, if. Yeah. Um, but it's if it's not part of the culture and you're not born with it, then you won't just start doing it because you should. Right. You know, I, yes. Does yes, that yes, make yes, sense? Yes, so yes they, totally. The only guy, like I said, if they have one out of, you, you know, and I like, I like Connor Murphy and he does everything the right way, but I wouldn't say that he's mean, you know, he's just like, a, he, he, he will answer the bell, but he's not taking, he's not taking a pound of flesh off of guys unless like something happens like they Very need they egregious. need a little bit they need a little bit more compete to them a little more sandpaper and um you know that's kind of the big takeaway is that they're just you know they're a young team and they're going to learn how to play and all that but you should know how to compete already and mm-hmm. it's like they don't compete hard enough back to the top of your statement mm-hmm. dave you that's one thing that this man is just as bad as you and you do not give him enough shit about say that again the mush he truly is. I was about to say, so, of, so against the uh, Arizona, that's the first game that I haven't watched, at least on TV, too, and they got their doors blown off against the worst team that they've played by far. So maybe I'm the good luck charm. Yeah. He's well, and like the night before, so they had a bad game. I can't remember who it was against, where they got called out publicly. The next game was against Vegas. They go down 2 nothing, and they fought their fucking dicks off. This is We were in Georgia. I watched that game through a hotel room, started at a weird time, started like five o'clock Eastern, even though it was in Vegas. And I watched that game and I'm like, all right, like this is uh, that way, boys. That's how you do it. And it was like, and then the very next game, it was like, all right, let's see what they do against this team. And I, I don't, I, I'm not like, I'm never going to be mad if they lose this team. They're going to lose a lot. They're going to lose a lot. I don't care. You, you gotta, you gotta compete. Yeah, definitely. And uh, they just, they there's ways do, to lose and there's ways not to. They I, need what they really <clears throat> need is to have the number one pick again. <laughs> like they need to be that bad. And like that, that kid who's going to be the number one pick in this coming draft, his name is Macklin Celebrini. He's playing for BU right now. He's been so fucking good for BU and position center. And, and you said you think Bedard will sell into a wing role. I think he'll be a center. I think he'll be a center, but it's, I watched that Celebrini and he reminds me a lot of a young Jonathan Taves. He's not quite as big. He's only six foot, but he's six foot like one ninety, which is good size. Yeah, stout. And he and he's that at eighteen, so he'll probably play at two hundred pounds. And so smart, he does everything well. And he's a guy like you can see it as a freshman at BU. He plays with fucking bite. He wants every loose puck. He wants to win every battle. He wants to do fuck. He wants to he like he's like an intimidator guy with the puck on a stick. Bedard is too with the puck on a stick. But it's like he he wants to fucking beat you. He wants to go around. He wants to go through you. He'll do whatever it takes. They need they need some of that. And uh, you know, so if your if your top three centers are Bedard, Celebrini, and then they have the other kid at BU, Ryan Green, who I really like. He'll, he's he's probably more of a bottom six center. Then you're pretty strong up the middle. Yeah. And uh, they they so, so we just need another draft rigging, basically. <laughs> I they might not need to rig it if they keep this up. You know, That's true. so bad. There is a rule that you can only have the number one pick twice in a five year span. So this would this would be it. Just get these two guys and we'll never have to worry about the law. Move it on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um we can end with this, Dave. Okay. The lowest over under total in history. Yeah. Will be this I, Saturday. I, I was, <laughs> at Wrigley Field between the Iowa Hawkeyes <laughs> and the Northwestern Wildcats at twenty nine and a half. I love it. Um <laughs> I was disappointed in Northwestern and Maryland last week. They both, it was 33 to 27, I think was the final. Too high of scoring for me, my taste. <laughs> um, I will be in attendance at Wrigley Field on Saturday. Decided, wow. so, talking to my guy Riley over at Northwestern, uh, he talked to me into going. So I'm just going to, I actually think I might go alone. Really? Unless someone wants to You're going to you buy like a half Northwestern, half Cub hat? Uh, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. Just a purple Cubs hat. <laughs> I went to the game at Wrigley in 2012. The bowl when, game? Was it a bowl game? No, it was against Illinois. It oh, was yeah, completely yeah. To- and totally sold out. 
but that morning they decided they could only use one half the field. It was so weird. Oh, I remember that. It was like they, so weird. That was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was so weird. Because it was like like there was no How room did they behind fix the it? end zone. It was literally the renovation. The, here's the end it? zone, here's the brick. What year was that? Uh two thousand twelve, no. I believe. Oh, so they probably did do some renovation yeah. since then. They widened that doesn't make any sense. You yeah, almost, they they so when they did their uh scoreboards and shit, because this is pre scoreboards, they made it so they can host football games. Oh. Okay, there you yeah. go. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's awesome. That That's was cool. awesome. Yeah. That what? was funny. It was so old school. Yeah. Well, they have, like, when you watch the old, like, Gale Sayers highlights, those are all in Wrigley Field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's why there are a faction of people, including Chuck Naso's dad, who they hate the Bears because they identified him as the Cubs team. So they're, they're Chicago Cardinals fans and uh -huh. then became Arizona Cardinals fans. There are a lot of people who became Packers yeah. fans. Just out of spite because they're like, fuck the Bears. That's that's the north side. I team. really wish there was a second team in this town sometimes. Think of think of that like the, hypothetical world. What if the not South that the Cardinals side team, are anything, but what if the South Side team, the Cardinals, maybe they shared in this hypothetical uh stadium with the White Sox. What if they were like the the uh, not not that the Cubs are that great, but the what if they were like the premier team on the South Side? Is it a Jerry Reinsdorf organization? Oh, that would that's be. probably true. That's probably true. <laughs> so I take that back. I take that back. <laughs> oh, dang. I do like yeah. Well, wow. so you're you're gonna take the over? I I'm taking. Uh, you can't. Uh, I'd have to go to it would uh, be the actual sports bet. book to bet it. But yeah, I am gonna try to take the over. Yes. All right. Anything else? I mean, end of days. It's been a good run here. That's it. Listen to today's dog walk too. We are all gonna kind of run it back and do like a best of like best, a, just kind of reminisce on the on this yeah. office office number two hq2 yeah chicago hq2 mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. it's that, been a, it's been a good office for us it has yeah it has and uh everyone else we'll see you out at wish fest yeah i can't wait wish fest is gonna be awesome so yeah. check that out for sure see you there um all right that's it everybody see you guys on tuesday or sunday whatever see you